All right, now at the stage is set, let's start bringing on our players, and I want to make sure you're all making noise for these players. But first, let's start off on the winner's side, Sonic Fox. I like that jacket. You like it? Yeah. Next up, can I get Nicholas? <laughs> All right, and still on the winner side, can I get Scorpion Prox to the stage? Make some noise there, yeah, stand up, make some noise. Coming up next, last person on the winner's side, Rewind, get up here. Get up here, Rewind. Yeah. All right, so that sets our winner's side. Now let's kick it over to the loser's side. Can I get King Gambler? Where you at, King Gambler? Yeah. All right, still losing side. It is with great pleasure I get to announce the legendary uh, Foxy Graham Pa. All right, and now coming up next, can I get Killer Jenna? Get up here. Yeah. I like that crowd. I like that. And the last player in this top eight, MK11, EVO 2022, Ham Rashid. Get up here, Ham Rashid. Get up here. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. All right, one more time, please, man, the back, EVO 22. Give it up for our top eight, MK11. All right, now with that said, I'm gonna give it up to our commentators out in the back so they can finish off and we can see who is the best MK11 player. Let's make it happen. Evo 2022, make some noise, one more. I am extremely excited for this. We've just gone through the top eight, right? You've seen the players, but do we know how deep the storylines go? Welcome everyone to Evo 2022, Mortal Kombat, the top eight, my name's Ketchup. I'm joined by Mr. Aquaman. Bro, this is possibly the most ridiculous top eight of the year, maybe even beyond. Oh, for, for a long time, guys. This storyline, when you look at it, let's take a look from the top to the bottom. When I looked at the bracket at the start, when 463 mortal combatants, combatiates, mortal combatants, joined us here at EVO. Look at who possibly could make it through on the winner's side, where things could align should some of the top seeds go through. And looking at it early on, this was from someone like me looking in a dream <coughs> catch-up to potentially see on the winner's side alone before we even get to the losers. Nikolas, Sonic Fox, Rewind, Scorpion Prox. This is America going against international across the board 50 50 every single match is going to be that storyline coming into this the u.s has never lost evo catch-up but it's come close it's come close foxy almost did it in x year one tekken master almost did it again in year two of mkx if we didn't have fox we might not be able to say that statement but look who is in this winner's top eight, trying to defend the home turf once more. Is your Skullgirls Evo champion already? We'll see if Sonic can defend the Mortal Kombat turf because these twins are ridiculous catch up. 
the twins are the talk of the town. Now, I've got to say, there are some people out there that maybe you only watch Evo. Maybe you don't know what's been happening all year round. And I tell you what, it has been a story and a half. Scorpion Prox and Nicholas, we saw age, young age of 17 when it comes to the professional players, right? They were way too young when this game even came out. And this year, the CEO at the start of the year, they got grand finals together, beating everyone. Combo Breaker, they both got grand finals together, beating everyone. And on top of the fact that they are in themselves fantastic achievements, anyone would be proud of that. There's always the naysayers, there's always the haters, the people that are saying, right. yeah, well, this player wasn't there and that player wasn't there. This tournament in particular, there's no excuses left. If either right. of the twins win this, or dare I say, they both get grand finals again. If they both get grand finals undisputed. again, I think that we just have to sit back and enjoy the show because we are just getting styled on at that point uh, here in Mortal Kombat 11. But these twins, guys, that is the storyline. Can the Sonic Fox defend on turf? But on the other side, Rewind, also considered by a lot of us the favorite to also be kind of that America's hope. At Combo Breaker, Rewind yes. was the player that came closest to being able to stop the double grand finals, right? So. And happens to get the run back to start things off here in the top eight. And then we look at the, the uh, loser side of things. Boy, do we got some big names there. And I know you're excited for a Foxy Grandpa rejoining us here in Evolution Top 8. We also got Killer Shinnok from Brazil. I know that those Brazil fla Brazilian flags are flying in the chat, and they will be once Killer Shinnok hits that stage. And then at the same time, Han Rashid, King Gambler. I mean, I, it's yeah. progression through and through. It's Did progression. you hear Han Rashid get the biggest round of applause out of anyone that made this top eight? It's, it's because the homies are in the crowd. Yeah, like, that's, you know the, I mean? like, that, that's, that's it. a fan that, favorite right there. When, when he won, and I feel like you remember him versus Wise Gemini was four top eight. Who, no matter who won, they were going to get that standing ovation. Yeah. Because no one, and I even looked back, no one in the chat, no one I talked to in the crowd wanted one of them to win over the other because people just love both of those players. But we will be seeing Han Rashid and that Fujin on display right. a little bit later on. And speaking of, is that the character that we might see here? Because we are joined by Sonic Fox and one of the Chilean True. twins, Nicolas. This is the thing, Aquaman. What is it that makes the twins from Chile so unbelievably good? It's optimization, their flawless blocks, their combo potential. The optimals, you'd literally think a computer was playing against you on the absolute highest, Look at their highest, card. Highest, They've been highest. playing since five years old. If they're only 17, that means that they started just before we got in, but they, they, they are, they've had all this time because they're 17 catch up to sit at home and grind these games for extended periods of time. And in a matchup, what are we seeing? Never, I'm hoping it's a button check, but this is real. I feel like it's a button check, but you never know. Dude, what I was going to say thing. is that Fox, the greatest Netherrealm player of all time, right? However, oh. there's always a secret. Fox does not tend to go with just the top tiers that everyone else is playing. The same characters, the same matchups. I think that's something that makes them so famous among fans, because yes. they truly do just trust their instinct and go who they want. Fox still has a selection of characters that are not very common. We saw Cassie in this tournament. No one plays Cassie anymore. But here we are now with a character that really doesn't get played all that much. Even Used surprisingly, Joker not as prevalent as, oh, I know, uh, right? as previous metas, really. Here we go. From a year ago, from a year plus ago. And ladies and gentlemen, who's it going to be? Of evolution is my getting. Surely we're going to see Fujin. Fujin or Cabal. I'm expecting Fujin Joker all the way. And we see the Wind God. The Mobile Express Unit. The Neutral Killer. But same could be said for this Joker. This is just going to be one hell of a matchup. With how we've seen the Twins dominate this year, it is no exaggeration that this set we're about to see could be the hardest set of MK11 Fox has played next to Ninja Killer at Final Combat. Yeah, this, this could be this that is on the same level. The biggest eyes need to be on this if you want to see competitive MK11. All the pressure is here. Every single comment over the past three years. Where's Sonic Fox? Sonic Fox is right there. And it was... Got to say, it was the people here that made Sonic enter this tournament. So many people came up to Sonic and said, I can't wait to see you play Mortal Kombat. Fox was kind of maybe going to DQ. 
But so many people wanted Fox to play that Fox was like, look, I've got to do it. I've got to give the people what they want. And just like that, they make top eight. So I've got to say, this, for me, was a community effort yes. that we're actually seeing this dream match. Now, there has been a pause here. Just finding out what's going to happen might come down to, well, actually, I'm not going to lie. I kind of missed what was happening in the game there once they started. So uh, whatever you know, it mean, is, we'll right, fix right it. Right as it started loading in, it, the Fox immediately hit the pause and looked to say something. Something might be up with the game. We'll see. They're on stage. Never know, but we're still waiting to get this first match started here. And yeah, shout outs to the community and everyone that has been wanting to see that because that is the big storyline that, we, that we've all been holding on to. We, we were given, you know, we've seen Fox dominate year and year and year and year, right? Time and time again, game over game. But here at, at CEO, we said, wait a minute, did these guys just come out of nowhere and could potentially give us some threat to the upper echelon of players in this community? This is going to be one of the biggest answers to that question. Um, just sort of keeping one eye on the uh, our little sort of production feed so we can kind of see what the player's doing. It does look like we are okay. Ah, there's been some kind of pause settings. Uh, more than likely some kind of competitive setting or whatever is being used. They're probably turning it back on. I think that Fox wanted quick rematch. Ah. Maybe. But I've got to say, a little bit of downtime at the start of the show, but really this is kind of like the, the beginnings of the whole thing, right? Like if people want to have settings, good to go, or maybe we need to get ready. This is the place to do it. That's right. Better to be happening right at the beginning when no match has been played versus, you know, halfway through the tournament when people have already played on it. But I think we're going to get the same matchup. The Joker and the Fujin picked again. And you guys just missed it, but they did. And now. They just shook hands. They are going in. This is the one. This is the one. There's, there's no reruns here. This is Evo. We're live. We're live, pal. Nikolas taking a deep breath, Sonic. Looking as composed as ever. Already an Evo champ this weekend. Trying to build on that. That, is, the intros, right? that is just a baseball bat right there. Here we go. Oh, Game one go. begins. It begins with a forward three rip from Sonic Fox, putting up some slow frames, not contested by Nikolas early. And then we're getting started with some big buttons. Now, what's this matchup gonna be? You know, Joker with the reach, the long range, the conversion potential, but Fujin, oh! Already an early mistake from Nicholas. And this is what we're thinking. Are there gonna be some nerves? The twins have been so composed all year long, but you're at EVO, you're in top eight, you're fighting Sonic Fox. This is when nerves get tested way more than anything else. You're on a stage where Sonic Fox has been 19 times prior, comfort level over 9,000. Nicholas, are the nerves going to hold? Resets neutral quite well there. Neither player taking too much damage at once. They've been nickel and diamond right now. What an interruption with the down three no to steal hit. the uh, the, uh, the offense from Sonic. Was definitely looking for a counter hit there, but no crushing blow left to go. Barely minus. Oh, the neutral duck and the break from Fox. But with the fatal blow locked and loaded, Joker becomes extremely dangerous here. Cancel. No flawless block there from Nicholas, but he interrupts anyway, and that's going to be round one. What a round start one. for the Chilean. Looking so smooth on the defensive option. And it's why when we saw Nicholas and Scorpion Fox for the first time, that forward one just absorbed Fujin. It's because of the things that we just saw. The execution, the defensive options. It didn't, not that, not get thrown. That micro duck was absurd. And the walk down of that caliber from Fox, really testing the waters. How likely is Nicholas going to be here to just press buttons to maybe challenge? I like that. Goes in for the what? knockdown, the trade. Not bad for Nicholas because it's going to prevent a combo. And the knockdown getting rid of the environment. So that's going to be even better. Fujin now has to take a little bit of time to build up those resources. If there's one thing Fujin is, it's meter intensive. That he is. That was such good composure by Sonic to look for an anti-air at where he was with the interactable. And it hit. Another knockdown. Really interesting to end the combos with that sort of tornado just to get the close range knockdown. And that but that's going to be Fox the first round. You can hear this crowd. Oh, they're, they're back it. in Fox. They know the pressure that's on for both of these players for the entire scene oh, right the now. sequence! Well, Try to take the wind out of Sonic here early on. Backing off. Well, that space. Has misspaced a couple of back twos and pushes so far. Nothing crazy. Hasn't, hasn't burned them too hard. Wow. A little bit of that extra counter hit damage there, Nicholas. A trade, but I mean, a, a trade that trade. works. You get the meter out, Fox, get the damage. At the air, doesn't want to overcommit though. That string on whip is absolute death. 
Oh. Well, that's your crap. Come here. He said, wake up throw. He said, wake up throw implemented. He is not afraid to challenge Sonic already. And that's what it's going to take. That's what we've always felt it's going to take. Someone that has bold enough to just play their game against Sonic and be comfortable. No, nothing. He is in full control. Sonic back to the wall. Will we see a real master? Oh, he is trying to. <laughs> He'll take it. Another dimension. Nicholas is happy to hold these throws right now. Look at the life difference. Who cares? I would be surprised if Fox goes for another one. But this time the throw tech. A challenge, a trade, but again, uh -oh. no tech. He's happy to take the damage. He'd rather Sonic Fox be minus and then take a turn. But no, he challenges. And right here, what is going to happen? Oh my no! goodness! Sonic is going to make Nicola blink first and take game number one. It's the real master to get us started. He flinched. He flinched at command. He was happy to hold every single throw that was happening there. He had the life to take it, but the moment he hesitated, Fox jumps on it, and that's where the experience comes into play. Unbelievable, and the boldness of Sonic to throw after blocking a jump in. Fortune just might favor him. Swing in front of his face, only get punished by the down one, and the back one finds its mark. Sonic, just a couple of miss spaces, gonna give Nico Loss a little bit of breathing room here, as he needs to get settled quick. A wonderful start here for Nicholas. That first game, maybe a bit of an eye opener, a wake up call. No matter how well I'm doing, I am not immune to that Fox factor. Oh, you ain't lying. Been a long time since we've seen it too on full display. That got the that got the adrenaline going. That's a moment we might see in the clip somewhere. <laughs> you know, the neutral duck now. That should be an easy full combo here. Amplify it just for the extra damage. No need to spend the crushing blow on that string. Save it for later, because now, Nicholas, one round up. But I'm still reeling over that last game. I'm not going to lie. Oh, absolutely. But you look at, at the checklist. Ooh. He's found that push multiple times. You look at the checklist of what makes, like, the top, top, top MK players ever. Look at Nikolas implementing one of those things that I feel like you need to check off. Composure in a moment like this. Now that break activated the late flawless block, knowing a jump in is going to be likely. So let's try and mess with the frames of it just a little bit. This is one thing about the uh, twins from Chile, both Nicholas and Scorpion Prox. Oh, you got caught! That is a tricky little Fujin mix there. It's not likely that someone's going to dedicate Ooh. all the way. Another flawless block, shutting down the back forward four. Oh, this is such good neutral from Nikolas, and it's Sonic who blinks their three-quarter screen. The back two catches you. You feel like oh. you can. Wow! Never breathes shift territory. Oh, oh no. no, not again! Not again, catch up! I cannot believe it. Fox just has the absolute oh. sixth sense, but a combo drop at the end is going to earn out Nicholas to make it one to one. Fox, I mean, Nicholas isn't the only one here that's having to sort of like adjust and get comfortable. That second game, Fox themselves yes. are in a position to go, right, hang on a minute. Okay, okay. To so drop that really tight stand for optimal pick. Oh. <laughs> oh, I don't even know what to say. This is this is why we talk about them the way that we do. Absolutely. The flawless blocks are unreasonably efficient. If you're wondering what would happen if the Google AI actually came to life, you're looking at Nicolas and Scorpion Prime. <laughs> Whoa! Wow! That would have been an interesting trade. And no doubt the uh, game sense to break straight away. <laughs> Maybe not the first time that's ever happened to Nicholas, but either way, a full conversion here for Sonic Fox. There's the launcher to continue. Extra damage, a nice little knockdown, and pressure for what comes next. A forward three, but just not going just anything on top three. of it. I think, Fox, you're going to be showing a lot of respect to those follow-ups. Yeah, that was the no mix-up mix-up from Nicolas. And catches Sonic, pressing a button. It looks like right there. He's not going to be able to reverse position, though. This is huge for Sonic with a forward three. Nicolas has not been afraid to do a forward three almost in Sonic's face given the start of it. Fox hasn't done much to challenge it yet, but Parmy thinks that that's just something we're going to see it develop as the set continues. Oh, Try to oh my punish. goodness, that could have been a back one for the round. Nicolas has a gift. The dash and throw, that was so risky. If Fox had a right read there on the grab, that would have been the end of the round, the delay and the cancel. But right now, the other throw direction coming out strong. And what a good choice that was. That was a bold throw to do. Nikolas has either micro ducked or tech, I think, three or four in a row. So Sonic, not afraid to bet big. And more of these wind pushes come out. We win it! Whoa! Amplifies there just to make himself less punishable, but the I'll, counter hits. I'm gonna still say gonna catch work. up. I think Fujin may have just broken the game a little bit. Maybe. A clean jump in and the breakaway. Ooh. Oh, there you go. Caught pressing. 
That was uh, earlier. Sonic had done a reversal throw on the early jump kick, and Regular Nikos got, got the back dash into the back one. And Sonic's done some good job of trying to call that out. It's been some good mind games. Throwing Sonic Fox out of the corner, Nicholas now knows really just corner positioning isn't going to win this matchup. Just trying to out neutral with punish. Do what Fujin does best. There's that back one. Oh, that's punishable! But oh, Fox not ready! Missed it by a millimeter on the forward two and flying out of dodges Nikolas. Gets the push in. Ooh. Hey, that's a good trade for damage. That wind push, we were kind of close to crushing blow. I was looking at that thing, maybe that KB that would have got rid of the uh, back forward four anyway. <laughs> Hang on, retreating to safety. What a choice there for Nicholas. And he that was just and Oh my god, that would have connected. If it wasn't the no. T-Rex limb fatal blow, and I could have been it. Sonic, pressure still on. The floor one's never Nicholas. He'll, he'll live, he'll goes. live, he'll live. The wind push. Jack in the box. Oh, oh, it's gonna be quicker. God. Nico lost, taking the breath out of Sonic to keep himself alive in this game. One wow. would think the, the KB. The only thing that would have saved him from the chip damage. Being able to activate that KB probably wasn't necessary at that point, but I mean, you just had to be sure. You had to be sure. Evo top eight depends on it. And now the counter hit the forward two is gone. Fox having to go with just a regular old combo, but still getting fantastic damage for the efforts. But this regular old combo did more than most of us are able to do in this game. That's ridiculous. I know. No whip punish there. The back two doesn't quite come out. Doesn't get the magic jump in either. Fox with a conversion. And now corner positioning. That forward one's pretty good, but Nicholas, a bit of a miracle to pull off. To oh, the down two misses, and that could very well be it because the breaker, sure, but you just can't win. Oh, oh God. that was so, such a, such a beautiful conversion right there. The crowd went wild because they'd never seen that one before. And Nicol just like Nicolas that. not putting in the breakaway that actually would have saved them through the down one. Not much time left for Nicholas to make something happen here. 2 1 for Sonic Fox. Oh, no, who no. was looking so comfortable, Aquaman. What a start, too. That's the one. No, no. That was the longest walk. Tried to coach Steve, man. Another confirm on that board, too. And meter to play with. 1 2 1. Let's just continue. Big damage. Corner positioning as well. Push back to give us whatever happens next. Jumps themselves into the corner, though. Nicholas, too close to get a conversion. However, now. Potentially, Nicholas has time to party. Flawless block! Why are you jumping on me? Eat this! Full cash out. Not gonna go for the restand as Nico lost. Making a button, Sonic. Both of these guys have had some bold wake up decisions. No red, Nico lost. Trying to get that anti crossover. One, two. Has been so good at the reactions of all those little minute things. And that Jack in the Box, this is the least I've seen it kind of come into play here. So many good straight to Flawless block with there. No, no meter. Thank you. This is so scary right now. This is a pivotal round. What that Nicholas would very much appreciate. Kind of one touch to kill for both players. And he ever too far away to pick this up. No cancel. And the throw just comes out on its own. Nicholas a round up. Fox still only needs two rounds to move <laughs> that on here. Was so scary. Sonic had the knockdown on the corner. Dashed up in his face. Opted to look for the more defensive read, which was nothing, and it allowed Nicholas to jump out of the corner, get the, the pressure going. Oh, 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 barely missed face that one. I tried to pop the head. And that forward three has caused some unusual situations for Sonic trying to get some jack in the boxes out. The forward three saved them a lot. That meterless forward three into Tornado is not easy. It is so tricky to get consistently yet. Here we go. And we're punished. And now optimal. Just give me that down one. Extra damage. I'm sorry, Ford doesn't get the punish. Just safe staggers from both. The Wait back one's range. Did they make a conversion? No. One hit too many on the Skywalk. One hit too many. We've seen this before. Yes, we have. A combo drop from Nicholas. Will he live to regret it? Fatal Blows in play too for the extra chip in the forward one. No. And the throw going to do it, Sonic. Going to put himself, himself on match point here for Evolution. Guaranteed top three winners, finals. Pours the confetti out. Needs one more to fully celebrate. This is what I was thinking about. Experience, stress to the highest caliber. Execution is normally something that the twins can do in their sleep. Whoa. But that's changing in this top eight. We've seen so many uncharacteristic combo drops here from Nicholas. And I mean, you're going up against Sonic Fox, Evo top eight. This is where the stress is tested to its maximum degree. There's the flawless block though. Side switch as well. Give me that corner position, please. Oh man, Another what is throw! that? <laughs> Ludicrous the option there from Nicolas. Even crazier. Whip. Wow. Another one. Escape failed. Fujin pulling the limbo going to the ground right there. Throws have been super important for Nicolas. Has a high success rate with him with that KB loaded. Is he going to use that? 
against Fox here late. That back one's going to become quite Whoa. scary. Oh, and there's the throw escapes. That's going to nullify the crushing blow that was locked and loaded to the throw. And then and immediately Fox. into all of this damage. 348 has to stop the bleeding. And what a replay Sonic 2 just neutral jump. And is there anything that you can do about this? Look, all the guaranteed damage. Sonic Fox with the Jonathan. But he just swings with the back one. One taking the breath from me out of his opponent. And this is going to continue. That was such a clutch moment. Fox trying to simply meet the down one into the jack-in-the-box. Such an honest little play, but one that was happily punished. And the fatal blow gives us exactly what we want. And it looks like this set's going to be going all the way, Mr. Ackerman. And can I say we expected anything less? Absolutely not. So. Everyone out there is enjoying this as much as we are. Hope you guys brought, brought some popcorn today. Things have just gotten started. This game means so much. This one match means so much to both these players. Nicholas being able to get this into the guaranteed top three finish. That would be an unbelievable result for such a young player, an up and comer, a perfect example of new blood in the Netherrealm scene. And Sonic Fox, no longer the young player they once were, you know. So many Evo top eights under their belt, so many games. This would be so important for both of them. And I Fox would love to get an Evo win again, again. considering, you know, good weekend for them so far. I was naming all the previous champions, and Sonic Fox's name kept coming up time and time again when it comes to these titles. Four, three. Has been winning these games since Injustice 1 and pulled. Wake up down two. Such safe pressure and there's a reversal punish. Hold on a second. The wake up one two does not work and that's going to be a massive damage. And there's the jump in for even more of this optimized fusion play. These combos not as simple as they look. And Fair. another confirm. Oh that goodness. should be the route. What an insane time to get aggressive too because it was right when Nikolas gave Sonic Fox the fatal blow. That's usually when you have to give Joker a little bit of extra respect. He said, uh-uh, not today. We're trying to win Evo. Just like that. Nicholas match point on Sonic Fox. This would be a landmark victory in our community, being able to take this by all means. I mean, that, that the tournament's not going to be over, but the chase, the whip punish, doesn't go in for the KB though. Just keeps it meterless. And tried to fish for the armor break too. Such optimal play from both right now. Such a big win. Down it, Sonic. In a fight around situation, he got this match point. Already halfway there. We know Sonic Fox has the comebacks. Capable. But can they pull off a comeback of this caliber as every single whiff punish is coming through? Whiffing that forward two like nobody's business. The defense to block that back one, but there's not many opportunities left to bring this back. Thankfully for Joker, fatal blow. Do not think that down two is intentional. Uh, I don't know about that one. Maybe, maybe, maybe the forward two attempt, the dash forward two. But Fox has been struggling with a couple of dash cancel normals that have whipped. That's it! And Nico lost the jump kick connects. Sonic is being sent to losers. The I... twin from Chile <laughs> has done it. You know, there's going to be the voices of South America coming out there and congratulating either in the, in the crowd, in the stream chat, whether you're at home or here right now. That was a fantastic start to this top eight. Fantastic. What you, you can't ask for more. You can't. A game five between the two players that I think a lot of us were hoping to see in that situation because we never want to see anyone lose. But you got it in the bracket, right? These two players being here representing the apex of competitive MK11. That entire series was a perfect demonstration of what we're currently looking at with competitive Mortal Kombat. I mean, Nicholas now winner's final, top three at least in this bracket. And the question's going to be, is Nicholas's beloved twin brother going to join him? Because up next, it'll be Rewind versus Scorpion Prox. Rewind at Combo Breaker was the single player that was the closest. Two. K-Mac as well. K-Mac. No, we've got to give it. But yep. I'm talking in the context of like the top eight, right? I'm That's true. The context of like the final stage. Yep. So Rewind was so close but couldn't quite pull it off. The run back, I think, is going to be greatly oh, appreciated. Hey, there's some juice on this one. Just because we do have a little bit of information going in right, we know that Rewind can do it. And wants to do it. And is a, and is a previous champion here. And Justice 2, baby. Another chip on Rewind Soldier. And two notes. We haven't really said it. The hometown hero 
here at Evolution. Rewind playing for Vegas, baby. I mean, Rewind may not live in Vegas anymore because, you know, real life sometimes be like that and you got to do what you got to do. But when you come back to your home turf and you get to hang out with your friends, your family, you get to see everyone again, you got to be feeling good. Mm -hmm. And if you're feeling good, you're playing good. Him and the, uh, him and the Terry brothers have taken home quite a few EVO medals. Yes, they have. For Vegas. Vegas in Netherrealm, not to be underestimated by any stretch. However, with the run back, the question's always going to be, what characters do we see? Because, right. So, now Nicholas get, get. has been one to sort of favor the Cabal, and it has been Scorpion Prox who has been playing a lot of Kotal. A lot as of, of late. Kotal. So are we going to... But Rewind also plays Kotal. Rewind does play Kotal. So that there's so many questions over what character we'll see. If we see Kotal... All right, I'm going to put you on the spot. I okay. If, I know exactly... Okay. Go if ahead. we see Kotal yep. from Scorpion Prox, mm -hmm. who do you see Rewind? Kano. Because he's too big. Yeah. Yeah, plus frames all day. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> That's what I think, anyway, going into this. It's what we saw of Rewind bully... Oh, I forget exactly who he ran into at Combo Breaker, but I believe he bullied a Kotal Khan with said Kano as well. But was rocking Kotal Khan himself was Rewind in that top eight. So a lot of familiarity. Well, we'll and see how it, this matchup goes. If you guys follow uh, Rewind's YouTube, you'll know that he picked up Kotal Khan a while ago as well. Yeah. Always on the grind, and there's so many... So many of these players actually are on the content grind these days, which you like to see. Keep yourself busy, keep yourself going, you know. Whether you're live streaming it, whether you're making stuff for videos or what have you. But I gotta say, whoever wins this moves on to fight Nicholas, right? And for the twins, they want nothing more than to just run it back again. Man, Wait. I don't understand it. Catch up. What's How up with is these it? button checks? How is it that these twins? It feels like, it doesn't feel like two different players are showing up. It feels like one entity is showing up that everyone's trying to like work around two pieces or like two, two parts of the bracket, right? And how do you beat them? They're the same player entered twice into the tournament. But what's so scary about the two of them is <laughs> you ask that question, how do you beat them? Normally with people, there are a few little things here and there that you can kind of uh, pick apart, perhaps. Oh, well, I'll, I, but was they gonna, play I was going to I was going to say, like... They no, play no, so no, optimal. No. I can't say that on PlayStation. I mean, look, they, they, <laughs> play, they play so optimal, I don't even know what answer I'd give. Right? They just play better than they do when they play almost perfect. All right, there's the Kotal Khan. Is your read on it? Are we going to see the Kano? So this is really, really scary. I have... Always, deep down on the inside, under the 15 layers of downplay, deep, deep at the bottom, right? I've had this gut feeling that if someone with an unholy level of execution, specifically when it comes to flawless blocks, were to pick up Kotal Khan, I was always afraid of Bio being a Kotal main, that we would see utter domination. Oh! <laughs> Why? Are you kidding me? Because... Are you kidding me? That was the first thing I mean, we saw! I mean, I'm trying to apply him over here. But that is the normal. If you're looking to practice flawless blocking a normal and neutral, you start with Kotal Khan's forward two catch up. That is number one to get your base started. And Rewind playing my favorite variation of Kotal Khan. It looks like he, he had a totem loaded. Is he going big? Beefy guaranteed damage. Yes, he is. And Let's also, go. And also at the same time, this. that move right 300. there, that down forward two, having that arcing hitbox, fantastic for knocking people out of the Breaks air. The There's armor. the breaker. This. Oh, you're done. Unless you, bro, you can't break. No, he drop. Did, he did dash. That's okay. Kotal Khan still sitting super pretty on the health. A fatal blow can kill. And this is just like looking in a mirror from the Nikolas play that we saw in the previous game. Gonna try a nickel and dime him here versus go for the fatal blow outright. Always That's a smart option. That throw was far from the worst thing in the world though because it does mean that you're successfully put out of the corner in that situation. The jump kick to mess with potential flawless block time. I like it. The early jump kick gets there so quick from Kotal Khan. He jumps up into the air and he's just an active tree trunk with that jump kick. Now that damage is proving to be really effective oh and there comes goodness. even more of it. And even with one totem, just look at the guaranteed damage he gets. Even if you get the smallest little one-two 
into your quarter circle forward two sword, you're getting more damage than most characters can do in a BNB. Even here, no totem. Look at the damage, 241. That's still big and beefy. That classic back two, the back two into totem summon. Oh, you're, you're in trouble. Whoa. Oh, he gets off, he lets you, I think he went, oh, he went out and in. That was such a Fujin. Oh, uh, of course he's got the command grab. That's oh, the you first know time it. we've seen it all game. You know uh. it. That's a 200 damage and mid command grab. And here comes the mix. <laughs> That's a good. This could be the round. He's lit up like the 4th of July. Total cut about to paint the sun. Photosynthesis has occurred. And rewind takes game number one. The crowd going wild. That is the exact kind of play that's going to bring Rewind forward right here. That was I the mean, most American play I've seen, too. He said, I'm picking damage, I'm taking big risks. Wake up forward, one, two, into half life. Big stuff. Got totems out, chunked away that health bar quick. Now, what it has done is prompt a character change. We're going in with Cabal. And got to say, again, if you watched Evo for last MK and you haven't seen it in years, this Cabal is very different to the Cabal you saw once before. Custom variations, folks. Cabal's ability to combine a hook grab with the air dash. One of the strongest variations in the game by far. In comparison to his pre patch days, he is now officially Cabal. Oh, it's not going to connect. Sometimes, sometimes with Kodal, you have to recognize that that 4 2 is going to anti air, and the only way is just to go in that single special. Big damage. Cabal, the name of the game. Chases down the roll. Recovered so well from that. <clears throat> Time to react. Nice to wake up there by Rewind to avoid the jump kick at least. Give some breathing room here. But, but this variation of Kotal doesn't have the scariest offense or tools in that situation to maybe get out of the Ooh. corner. That was just so much damage. Scorpion Prox is coming to life a little bit. And we know that this Cabal is capable of doing wondrous things. It's the character that we primarily saw at CEO. And then we saw him get a little more, got a little more variety at Combo Breaker coming into Evo. And Rewind's gonna drink a little bit of that Kool-Aid. Oh no! Didn't take enough. Now, one of the things I'm thinking about here at Command is that we know that Scorpion Prox has those really optimal Cabal combos. You're going to have against Kotal. Oh. oh, what are you doing breaking here? Eat that damage, baby. You don't break against this variation of Kotal. I, I argue you shouldn't even think about it. It's not even a mechanic. <laughs> we'll find out what it might be, that delayed forward two. Rewind, still in it by all means, and there's a damage totem to make it just a bit better instant jump in. And look at the damage. This is so smart. He's not going beyond two totems at all. You don't need to. Uh oh, fatal blows in play. Does he spend it? Yeah. Oh, he misses it. Uh oh. Uh oh. He'll survive, but barely. That almost worked too. The call out. I'm up to the run, no man dash. Did he flawless block that? I'm sure he flawless blocked that dash. Uh, he had no defensive bar. I think I'm gonna be sick. I'm right there with you. Damage totem, ready to go, and around. On the board, some breathing space for Rewind to Stop do it again. It. Denies the plus frames and says, no mate, I wanna flawless block that, thank you. Counter hit That's into a full combo for your boy. What he just did is take away almost the entire offensive game plan of Kotal Khan 2, which is down three hit advantage, mixing the command grab. Ooh, the one two. Flawless block once more. Dash in, come on, grab. No doubt amplify here to keep the corner. Ugh. Now he's got two damage buffs. One from the command grab itself as Kotal Khan is glowing. You see those tattoos, those yellow tattoos. The brighter that they glow, the more damage this big boy is going to do. Now that fatal blow's locked in now. That grab's gonna unlock the potential here uh -oh. of Cold Card. Two totems. Do not get hit, my friend, otherwise you're done. However, 1 1 1. Unbreakable. No, he gets it. Is that it? No need. need. No need to go for unbreakable wow. when you've got no defensive bar. We'll just take the damage. I think Rewind may have gotten caught there going for the triple totem stack. I think that he thought that maybe the triple stack, Raw Fatal Blow, was gonna kill for himself in that situation. Got to go the breakaway there. Rewind, not recognizing that that 4-2 is going to anti and go immediately into the down 4-2. And Rewind, no hesitation on the restart. No hesitation. Ooh, I Khan is definitely the character for this matchup, at least for now. We'll see how this next match goes. But <laughs> another catch! No meter to amplify, but honestly, who cares? He, he put himself in the corner with a totem and some negative frames, and he is just making it work right now. Oh, uh, this won't even have... He was up on health, but hey. Not even. Kotal's still got the life lead. This, this boy's beefy. Oh, you know it. 
50 extra juicy, thick health points. Any risk into a flawless block and rewind is not challenging it, at least right now. Expects maybe a stagger of some sort, perhaps something a little bit against the grain. There's the jump in though for Scorpion Prox and that'll be the round for sure. Maybe the first totem that we've seen cleanly punished outright. Rewind's gotten a lot of them out in neutral. That damage totem the least, has the least recovery out of all the totems, but still, it is going to be susceptible to a read like that with Cabal, who's always gonna be leaping. Big jump in! Oh god, that 26. What an what an OS, what an OS to have catch up off of your jump kick. That guarantee just saw him. Looking like an MKX brutality on command. What? And oh, there's no way Rewind was ready for that jump in to just dude, work like, like that. A, like a ghost from Christmas past. Kotal's jump one being absurd. No tech on the throw, holding them for now, but the time will run out the second we get closer to Fatal Blow kill territory. And that is dawning on us right now. All right, rewind just outside of the range where he can micro duck into the forward two to check that. And that is the second wake up one one in back to back rounds. No fatal blow though. And he's still oh do my it. God. Scorpion just said, I'm taking this game right now. Rewind, there was an absolute moment of, yo, you just did that? You did that? Really? Okay. It's time to go back to character select. <laughs> Ketchup, I can confirm, eat? and I think everyone here can confirm. He did that. He did, in fact, do it. That that happened. Now, I think a little bit of stabilizing the momentum is what this character change was about, because it looked to me like that Kotal Khan variation was exactly the same. So more than likely, this was a, right, yep, you got me. So you're going to probably feel some momentum from that. I'm not going to feel so great. Let's just disengage a little bit and come back, and that's exactly what we're doing here. Scorpion Prox just needs one more game to meet to meet Nicholas and his finals. I mean, what's going on here? Wait, did he just? That was insane. That was insane. Ooh. Okay. Oh god, a bit scrambly at the start of the round, but you know what? Plenty of the round left to go. Love that he's using one one of those key knockdowns of Kotal Khan's to load up those totems. Even right here, could backdash and get another one up, but he's sticking it out with the one. Even though the time was about to run out, you can't reset. He's keeping the aggression up instead, and I like that. He, he's trying to regain some momentum as Rewind. Got a big knockdown, and that's a lot of frames to put on the screen, too. You're swinging a big pop of Count's Pizza there. No punish there. Recovers just in time here for Rewind. Who in this situation, amplify it. Ooh, give me some more of that. Huge knockdown whoa, here, whoa. and that is just... A tough spot to be against Kotal Khan. The hard knockdown really close to him at, at, at strike mid command grab range. It's not strike though, it's, it, it's, it's a lot scarier than that with this guy. That instant air to air, something that Rewind has been getting so much mileage out of. The back to back <laughs> down three, just in case you were thinking I about it. I had a conversation spot. with him about Kotal Khan yesterday. He said, man, ever since I found Kotal Khan's down three, I sometimes just do it and spam it. It is so fun. Such a good hit advantage to Two have with Kotal Khan. Two of them. If you get hit now, the game's over. If he gets a triple stack oh. up. Oh no! Look at the damage! That's like 240, 250! Okay, it went away in the middle of it and it still hurt. Flawless blocks out there for Scorpion Prox. Keeping that execution nice and ripe as we exit this round, potentially. A confirm, and now Fatal Blow just became Ooh. very scary! Oh, what an optimal! He's gonna run the wake up, he's gonna get it, but it's not fatal! Oh my goodness! Uh oh! Don't get hit! Fatal Blow's not gonna be needed anymore! Is Rewind gonna find it? What's it gonna be? The patience now. The flawless block, but no meter to do anything about it. Whoa! Commit! What was the decision there? I'm gonna do that string and you're gonna let go of block. That was a next, next, next level just commitment. And if it worked, he we'd be losing it. Really did bet it all on Rewind, matching the reversal of after the 1-1-1. Incredible. Armor breaker, no doubt. We'll spend it. Spend it while you got it. And that's a great way to start this final game here between Scorpion and Rewind. Oh, you can't break away there. That was the sweet spot for it to hit. Both these players out there, huge start, and he even had time to think, oh, my normal's not gonna reach. Let me go to option B. And now defense here for Rewind. This Stop time it. calls it out. You want a flawless block here? Feel free. I'll just wait and get my punish. But where do we go from here? That's the question, totem one. Are we looking for a second? Totem two. Uh-oh. Are we going IHOP? Can we get the triple stack? Oh, no.
no. <gasps> oh, no. All of the damage, everyone. This is out on the table. This jumping is going to be problematic. Rewind, this is the last chance for the winner's bracket life here. Match point for Scorpion Props. He gets one up. Get off me. He has the full lead. Throughout Kotal Khan's quickest button there, but it's a high. It was a good check from Scorpion to go to that four. He gets knocked down to the throw. Oh, these guys have not been afraid to jump themselves into the corner, but it does cover a lot of the wake-up options if you think about it. And now Scorpion going to be making that hard read on command grab, the way things are currently going so much. Now the escape failed. That reverse throw is going to do so much damage oh. if he lands it. The breakaway for Rewind, probably the last breakaway. We're going to see! Oh, that good was Lord. ludicrous! Scorpion props taking the breath from all of us here with that one. Such gameplay in both of these winners. Semis and the double jump kick will do it. Scorpion props will be needing his own blood brother in the winner's finals of Evolution 2022 here for Mortal Kombat 11. The story is going to continue, but what a statement just those two matches but were. again, though, Mr. Ackerman, again! This is, for me, one of the most significant turning points in our community's modern history. These two players who I reckon there was a huge amount of people didn't even know who these two were before this year began. But after three of the biggest Netherrealm tournaments that we've had this year, we all know who they are now. Because they are now minimum top three. They are minimum two of the top three. Two of the top three at the biggest tournament in the world. Say less. Like, you don't need to say anything else about that. This, if there was any doubt, I'm telling you at home, if you ever doubted either of them, this, this is it. This, yeah. this is the doubt gone. They, they, they've just established themselves. Young blood as well. I mean, where are they going to be in the next game? 17 years old, the protégés. What, what are we going to do as a community to stop them for the next 10, 15 years? That's, that's a question. I mean, that's a question I'm, I'm I have, but this, up, man. this tournament is far from over. That was just the first two matches of this top eight, ladies and gentlemen. When we come back, we have some more Mortal Kombat action going down the loser's side, some more action from internationals and Americans going at it. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to EVO 2022, everyone. Mortal Kombat 11 is what's on the menu. Hope you guys are hungry because we've already been given some tasty treats to get started on the winner's side with a 3-2 victory for the Chilean twins, both over Sonic Fox and Rewind as we are going to descend down into the loser's bracket where the excitement, the level of play, is going to remain the same, I feel like. These are two incredibly exciting matches coming back to back. And on stage is gonna be Han Rashid and Killer Shinnok. Got to talk to Killer Shinnok just now, up on the stage before we got started here. He's incredibly excited coming into this. Uh, really, really wants the run back with Fox. I said, you're gonna need a run to, to get it. He said, I know, and I'm about to do it. It's nice to see that Killer Jinok has really settled on a character too. You know, we've known of Killer Jinok for years. Early on, Jinok was kind of more known for, for having characters that we'd stick with and do really well. MK11, I feel like that first year, maybe even a year and a half or so, Killer Jinok was a bit inconsistent, I think. And then the moment I've seen Jinok play loads of spawn, oh, man. it's been Look totally different. And yeah, I mean, look. Oh my goodness. Someone's going to get the, the backing of the crowd crazy, here. and it's hard, Rashid. Oh, wait, Killer Jinok, there we go. I mean, there is a lot. A lot of Latin America in the crowd here. Oh my lord. I don't, even, I don't even want to say anything while they're chanting. I just want the people at home to this hear it. This is incredible. This is the most energy I've seen in the crowd for a Mortal Kombat game. Possibly ever. Well, outside of one being in Brazil. 
<laughs> Which, I mean, I think that's just cheating because South America because is... Because everyone here is rooting for her for some nah, South... <laughs> They've got... So many people don't realize just how much passion it's South America why... has for Mortal Kombat. It's why they're here and winning. Yeah. They have simply put, ladies and gentlemen, if you're sitting at home asking yourselves why they might be here winning... One of the factors that can be talked about is that I do feel like that they've got more passion than every other community. Would, would you believe me if I told you that Brazil, to this day, at least I'm fairly certain it's Brazil, I've been told such, will still have 100-person Ultimate MK3 tournaments? Yeah. To this day. You have people that play I MK2. Think they still have like 80, 90 person MKX tournaments, Combat Club still hosting out there. Like, there's still so much going on. They play more Combat Trilogy for crying out loud. They do. You have, you have tri a bunch of Trilogy players in South America. I mean, come on. It's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And it's Incredible. Passion through and through. Really built in from a lifetime of the game. But. A uh, little bit of a, I believe we're going for some kind of uh, console thing here. Maybe going to have to check some settings. Might have to go for either a profile change or maybe a console swap, whatever. As soon as that's ready, we'll be in. So rest assured, we want to see the matches just as much as oh, you do. Yeah. One player we actually haven't actually sat and talked about yet is Han Rashid, though. Han Rashid has been in our scene for a long time. But it's as of this year, yeah. Han Rashid has kind of just, as every player has to ascend, right? They, they reach that next level, and sometimes it takes people longer than others. I would say that Han Rashid was personally, in my opinion, on the longer end of that, because yes. you know, we've known Han Rashid for years and years, but it is this year in particular where the success is just starting to pile up and up and up. And Because we always knew him as a, as a dark horse at every single tournament, we were like, man, Han Rashid could do it if he's playing well that day. And that's what it was always kind of like. Always had the skill, was always scary to fight. Not a lot of top players wanted to fight Han Rashid on any given day. And you're right, it's this year. And what is, I believe, to be three top eights in a row, taking home the triple crown of the tournament season of top eight at Combo Breaker, CEO, and Evo here. This is a breakout year for Han Rashid. Sky's the limit from this point. For some players, it really does take that kind of first push, that first really, really, really big placement that has ascended what you've done before. Not to say that Han Rashid wasn't successful before this year, because obviously we knew him for a reason, but the caliber of top eights in the biggest events, this is where things are starting to change. And from this point, you know you can do it. Yes. So now all that's left to do is to place higher in said top eight. And maybe that's gonna happen today. Spawn the damage machine, Aquaman. What a monster. Interestingly, too, Launcher, but Jinnok loves that raising helm, the safety. Yes. It's very rare that you see a spawn player take those moves together, but I think Jinnok's onto something. Loves abusing that low, taking away gaps with it, unconventional staggers, loves abusing that down one into it. And guys, bear with us as the health bars are raised, but you can slightly see them. I imagine, they'll, they'll, I imagine they'll just tell them to lower it after this match, but Absolutely. they certainly Ooh. won't tell them in the middle of it. That would be ridiculous. Killer. Kind, of, kind of an unconventional rip of the back one, too. Maybe he was meant, meaning to go into the low, or he's getting that overhead mix started, and he's going to try to condition into opening up that low chain later. When you've got a bunch of games to work with, sometimes putting that threat in early when you have more wiggle room can be the one. However, either way, doesn't quite finish the combo. A and big jump in, though, for Han Rashid. Man, what is, it about, first round. what is it about the character Fujin that almost single-handedly gives these players abilities to flawless block. I mean, <laughs> every Fuji player tonight has just been flawless blocking in the neutral more impressively than anything. Well, you said it yourself. Killer Jinnok, oh, the chase down. Just doesn't want to overcommit there, though. I think that was a good choice, and we're just going to take the damage for what it is. Jinnok really wanting that run back against Sonic Fox. It was so close yesterday. It was almost Jinnok that was winning side top eight, but not meant to be. Got to get through hard received for the run back. Oh, no. no! Whoa! The cane whipped by a centimeter. That was unfortunate. <laughs> You're gonna whip with one of the biggest looking down twos in the entire game. And it just missed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, good lord. Anyway, it's supposed to be there to save him, no one. Oh, wow, the whiff on the standing one. Man. Killer Shinnok has just been unlucky <laughs> been in this, this game. This close a couple KB. of times now. Oh, that's such a shame. Oh, that's such a shame. 
And now defensive bar is here for Kalashinok, but I don't even think he has the health to really spend it anymore. And the duck on the standing one. Lawless block right. on the jump in. Took away any type of cancel or frame advantage. Micro duck and punished. Han Rashid saying, oh, 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 I thought he was talking to us. I thought he was talking to the crowd. I thought he was saying, I want to hear it. Make some noise. Not going to lie, Instead, that first game. It was game, production telling him lower the price. That was. <laughs> <laughs> That's very much the, uh, that first game, that has to be Shinnok's opportunity to just kind of refresh. Because there were way too many mishaps in that game. Yeah. You can't be having mistakes like that now. And this particular variation of spawn, I noticed he got so many little hits, stray hits and anti-air, one, one air to air in the corner, that this particular variation of doesn't get damage. Or like big, big damage like we're used to seeing from spawn. You know, like one little pickup and the boom, 340 guaranteed, 300 guaranteed. This one, he's only hit for about 190 max so far. The more meter you spend on the safety of that raising hell, the less meter you're gonna have for those big conversions. However, one thing to mention here, the crushing blow management, something that's been very good for Killer Jinnok. That 1-1 one, one charged back to, you know, on counter hit, that's gonna KB, the KB in the corner. It's a really nice way of Jinnok to kind of maximize every ounce of damage he can get his hands on. There's the punish, standing three. I think we're on game two, and that's the third flawless block of a jump in that Han Rashid's had. Didn't save him from that spawn damage we talked about. Kill Shinnok said Maxi was around nine or 190 going into this. Get started with a big one. And enough of a cushion to survive a little bit of a comeback from Han Rashid. I still feel confident. Ooh, that's, that chain whipping a little bit could have given Han Rashid a little bit of an opportunity. So is that. Oh, he's letting it rip again. Let's the mix up go. I mean, it would have been quite rewarding. It would have forced the break around Han Rashid. Worth going for, but unfortunately not quite. Oh, that's <laughs> almost a disaster. A big jump and empty jump standing one again, maybe to mess up that flawless block timing. The second you know your opponent's gonna go for it, you know, that's where it gets a lot more risky. That back one into low, it's sometimes may as well be guaranteed because no one's gonna, you know, no one's blocking low there. If you're expecting it, you get hit by the overheads, you are gonna feel like a sucker. And oh, scary whip. You're right, and right there, it's just conditioning at this point. Now that he's rocked two overheads, they've gone punished, the lows worked, and now he's throwing in just the back one stagger. And now, Killer Shinnok is gaming. I was gonna say, is that, is that gonna pick up the gravity a little too much? He's been ending combos in the back one too there with Spawn quite often. It just must give him some kind of knockdown situation that he really wants to work with. Sometimes it's like a player specific knockdown that isn't really on paper maybe like the best as far as numbers go, but it could be a personal thing. Sometimes I have knockdowns that I just prefer. To be fair, he is going to have to end his combos in a different way with this variation because if I'm not mistaken, Hellraiser does replace the uh, restand, right? Yes. Oh! He'll blow out of nowhere. He's gonna do good damage, but very much a panic button. Get off me. Let's restabilize the situation. Yeah, well, man. Breathe. <laughs> okay. That's not even enough to give Killers Jinnok the fatal blow yet. Flawless block's good, but there's the down one, and now it's one game apiece. Significantly more, I would say, rock solid from Killer Jinnok in that matchup. And this could be where we go from here, right? Everyone's warmed up, everyone's more comfortable. We're seeing the conditioning already come into play from the game prior. Really opened up a couple of doors for Shinnok in game number two there. Han Rashid was given his, his moments, his opportunities. Tied things up in that first round after the huge deficit. I think, that, I think we're just picking up where we left off on the winner's side, man. It's gonna be 3-2 across the board. Start to end today. This is the place to it's do a, it. It's a long top eight ahead, guys. I'm one to one. It. Now the adaptation there from Shinnok, just really being able to establish his own game more. That first game was very much the Han Rashid show, kind of doing what he wanted to do, and when he tried to punish, I think two or three game-changing misses. None of that happened in the next time round. However, there's a catch there for Han Rashid. Oh, Wake up, up one, one one. Oh God. How prevalent has Wake Up Quick Buttons been in this top eight so far? The Wake Up 1-1s one have been all over the place. The menace to society. Han Rashid's gonna keep things nice and solid here. Oh, uh -oh. oh wait, oh, uh -oh. Lord. He's got meter, and Han Rashid's got no breaker. This is gonna do so much damage. No, he just, I mean, he still did a lot of damage. He's to hold onto the bar just so the next one can kill. Oh, the punish though, Han Rashid. That back two gives him the ring. 
Oh, and again, little it's too the back much one, greed from Killer Shinnok on that one. He wanted to pull off a feat right there, which was kill a man in 20 seconds. But again, he's, he's going to cut his damage just a little bit short in that situation. You know, the down two leaves him too far away. You haven't got the restand because you've got Raising Hell. So he's going to have to sort of make do with the variation that he's got, right? You can take the pros with the cons, as it were. However, Han Rashid looking really good in this next round as well. Mm. The 4-3. Me to the pick up. Oh, wow. Okay. So pretty what? good from Han on that hill. Watch your toes. Who lets that string rock? Han Rashid. <laughs> A couple of barrels. This space almost such a good dash cancel to the block right there immediately from Han. Not getting clipped by the Ross Van 3 that would have clipped mix up! Oh, baby! That was either a mix up or you just got caught by it. Either way. Wow! Oh! The buttons, they are pressing right now. Catch up. That's a lot of damage. This is the definition of a DLC fatal blow. There's a lot of damage coming on you. This is actually close to killing. I mean, the question is... Oh man, this might kill. I mean, it's either oh no, my god! Is it dead? He is dead! 523! It spawned from the depths of hell! I'll show you some damage. When they say spawn has the highest practical damage, they bloody well mean it. You think we're trolling out here? Not today. Wait what for the jump. Counter hit! Wait so long for the turbine. The jump was just animalistic from Killer. With punish once more. Let's just take it. Basically 15% damage, give or take. Thank you very much. Wavy wavy into the throw. It's looking good, but Killer Shinnok really bringing some life back into this matchup. Looked a little bit bleak, and then bam, there's the damage output. Tries to anti air, but caught out by it. Han Rashid acknowledges that. Nice patience there. It's been a mind game of everyone seeing that turbine fly away from them. What are they gonna use to chase it down or try to punish with? You either wait for them to overfly or do something early to try to catch them on that uh, dissension. Chain's gonna hit and that's some good beefy damage. Empty oh, jump no! Empty jump one one's better the entire time. To mix up. Good patience. This is so scary! No! And the down move's gonna go one for the top machine! Is back on top! This Mortal Kombat cannot get any better here. My breath is gone. Looking back to the crowd. They're coming to life. A justifiable head shake there from Killer Jean, thinking, how did I get hit by that? But enough. Momentum is the name of the game, and one that Han Rashid is going to feel so much for, not just because of how that game went, but the crowd behind him, who is screaming his name. It felt like it was Killer Shinnok right there, one button away from taking it. The down three Two with whips. one. It was a down three or down four. I can't, it just. I think it was. I, actually, I can't remember. Good, good, good point. But good point. a hard punish to punish it with a high in the recovery like he did. Oh. Oh, that, that's not the way you want to start a game, and the whip punish as well, Han Rashid. <laughs> this is looking all him right now. And then Shinnok wakes up and manages to get something on the board because it's just been over. Well, oh, pressure. The moment that he let go of block, he was sitting there four seconds straight. Okay, he's not going to do anything. The back two. Whoa. I don't know what Han Rashid did, but he was trying to react. Oh, God. Yeah, this is this is looking like a bit of a spaghetti fest, but one that Han Rashid is doing much better in. Killers, you know, come on, mate, this is your last chance. This is one of those situations where it felt like he could do no wrong until he does a weight dash up throw. That killer shark's gonna punish crushingly for 298. <laughs> to find himself knocked down to the corner. Big air there from Han, and he's spin all over these breakaways. I don't think Killer Shinnok has had an opportunity to break. He does there, but the damage had already been done. The Sup crowd superb. is already chanting for They're Han going Rashid. Wild. You guys hear it? Short hop, just to get that cheeky little knockdown. We'll confirm that. No break up Han Rashid either. We just keep things as good as we can for this. The anti air <laughs> still believes in the ability to win this round. Dedicates to the low mix up. Han Rashid finally blocks it. That was a risky block, if I've ever seen one. The 1 1 back 2. The KP's already been spent. Yes, it has. Han Rashid, this is still within the realm of possibility, especially now. The Fatal Boy will do it, and he's respecting okay. it. So the grab comes in. Han, huh? can he do it right now? Turbine's in. Killer no. Shinnok gets the amplified projectile. That is the constant mind game that will be there behind what is considered one of the best projectiles in this game. Just a <gasps> Oh my goodness, I'm a joke. I'm not joking. 
Optimals as well! Optimal damage, baby! Oh, God! He's got no breaker! Here we go again! Two bars! Will he spend both or just keep one? One, two! Oh. Look at the damage! 585 for breaking records out here! For the anti air from Han Rashid is an immediate turnaround. Just as good of a situation now. Pushes towards the corner. The 1 1, the plus on block, challenges it this time. Knockdown damage as Collision Ops again takes those plus frames. But the fatal blow for Fujin, it's so good. Ooh. Loving the aggression by Hunter Rashid. He's way dashed up into his face so many times, and even there, really trying to set the tone. He's dashing up into nothing. I wonder if it's conditioning for what could come now. Is he going to be dashing buttons? No, still trying to bait the big buttons of spawn. Give him the bar. The KB, he spent it. He's Why already he, spent but, it. But he had the bar to hit for I know. One would think maybe the pressure is going to get to him here. That's minus enough for a low poke. And the audience themselves are having quite the battle. This is a battle between North America fans and South America fans. And there's a lot of them. Three game fives in a row. Whoever wins this, there's gonna be some noise. I tell you what. There's the Han chance. Again. That is the loudest chant I have ever heard for Mortal Kombat. I'm Let's here go. For it. I'm here for it. It's We're been a long here time for this coming. kind of energy, ladies and gentlemen. Evo 2022. We've been away for so long and now we're back. And coming up later in the program, guys, we are going to have final form. Sonic Fox. Because we know that storyline too, Ketchup. Yes, we do. It's not the first time Fox has been sent to lose as an Evo, but that's a story for another time as the meatless forward three pick up there for Han Rashid begins and the breaker has already been spent from Killer Shinnok. This is the best start the you could possibly have. And what was that sequence from Han to get started? Was that interactable plus? Ooh. Bone shape of Fujin. Jump in. And once again, yo, we picked this up. We're picking this up. Oh my god. Wasn't full conversions, but hey, the damage was done regardless, right? That oh was... no, 20% just like that. Ouch. That was absurd. I don't think anyone here is uh, not getting hit there, Ketchup. Yeah. That's <laughs> possibly the highest hit rate of an interactable. It really is. It's so good. But now in this position, Killer Shinnok has a fantastic life lead to work with on Rashid now. Blocks it, tries to take his turn, but immediately fought back there as the plus frames from Jinnok pull through. Raising hell, watch your uh -oh. feet, mate! Watch your feet! What a flawless block! Oh my god! god. Oh my goodness! Two things, the flawless block and the quickest one, one hit confirmed, you'll see. Is he dead? One more push? Bam. No! 1% left in the tank! You have to watch out because that first push won't do it! He commits! Gets the jump low enough to the ground that the dive kick oh will come out! Oh my goodness! Match Perfection point for a hard when it comes to the chip out. And the pickup once more, Shinnok is in big trouble. Oh, oh, no. Just absorb the back to the corner, you go. This is not the start you want to have when you're match point down, but Han Rashid is going to take full advantage of the situation. Maybe expected a break there, so didn't want to overcommit either way. Working on almost a flawless victory. Shinnok needs to do something right now. You're running out of time. What in the world got the short hop in the air that the flawless blocks we are witnessing some wild. The 3 4 got, got flawless blocked on wake up from miles away. I've never even seen that before. Rashid was looking for and will pull off the win here against Killer Jinok. Jinok is understandably going to be disappointed, but this is the moment for Han Rashid, who has just continued to get better and better in this situation. I mean, there look at is. the friends, the friends and the crowd, fellow players. I mean, that's what Evo is all about, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, can you hear it? Can you guys I can hear it? Hear it. It's really loud. I mean, these might be really good mics that aren't picking it up because they're just picking us up. But it's... I know Mustard and Wonder Chef are going crazy out there with us, man. I know they gotta be. Shouts to Mustard and Wonder Chef doing the in-house commentary as well. So 
if you hear other people talking, it's probably them. Let's take a look at the uh, oh, oh, rewind and Han Rashid's gonna be in the next stage of the loser's bracket, but we have to get through our final first round of top eight match. King Gambler, the one and only, the specialist of many games, <laughs> Foxy Grandpa, a last minute Evo attendee. And if you thought there was in any way, shape or form biased commentary going into this, Oh, you're, get you're, ready. You're because, screwed now, mate. Sorry. Because on the other spectrum, uh, the other side of the spectrum, might catch up. I get to commentate a fellow Texan. That's a very good point. <laughs> oh man, the, the the war continues. Whoa, hold on a second. There, there's a battle everywhere. There's gonna be a battle in the crowd. There's gonna be a battle on the mats. There's gonna be a battle right here. There's gonna be a battle on the mic right now. That's what we're here for, man. But I mean, let's talk about these two. King Gambler, someone who has been very much up and down in the world of MK11, but I think it was because it just took him a long time to pick a good character. Yeah. Scarlet first. Even then. he will tell you. He's like, man, it's crazy how less I try now. Yeah, because <laughs> it was, the first year really was Scarlet, and then it was Nightwolf, and then it was a little bit of Liu Kang, settling yeah. now on Sub-Zero, and Sub-Zero, oh, man, combined with the fundamentals that gamblers put forward, is a wonderful combination. Now, speaking of which, Foxy Grandpa on the other end, Someone who really, once the online tournaments began with the lockdown, didn't really enter them because yeah. not really his kind of thing, not really a huge he fan of online tournaments. He Combat League for EVO. He did. Yeah. And um, even the tournaments this year, uh, you know, Foxy's, Foxy's not like sponsored, so it's kind of like it's, it was difficult for Foxy to justify it and everything else. Through a generous donation, we sent to Evo last minute and uh, got top eight. And now here we are. So there we go. Foxy's element is that Foxy plays a weird team of characters. There's Robocop, Katana, and uh, Sub Zero. But the way he plays is so. No, there's no one in the world that plays like Foxy. And have it's people Foxy. have people forgotten how to fight that? that that's yeah. my question. Be prepared for throws. Is Gambler gonna mix? Be prepared for I throws. I mean, he could very much just. This could. This could. If you look in the, into the future at all the possible timelines, there is a timeline that could exist where we see a Sub-Zero mirror. Maybe. Because, you know, who would Foxy use against Sub? Might just use Sub himself. That's right. Because uh, Foxy's philosophy changed. You know, known for the strike throw back in the day, and as the years have developed, decided to go for, if I'm going to commit to a mix-up, I'm going to commit to something that gives me more reward. Yes. And that's now where the, the sort of command grabs come into play. Do I play. want 13% or do I want 18%? Yeah, do I do, like, do, do command I want 13% grab characters, or do I want a 40% combo? Command grab characters, overhead low characters. That's why we see Robocop with the command grab. It's yes. why we see Sub-Zero with the highest combo damage moves available, you know, because Foxy just wants to get the most damage for the risks. And then Katana, who's just kind of this weird, you know, this, this weird character that a lot of people probably aren't used to fighting in that fashion. Um, and to the point where, it's like I said before, you really can't say you know how to fight Foxy unless you yeah. fought him, because it's so unexplainably strange. But he's uh, having a good time denying your fun, as it were. He's, he's an absolute <laughs> wizard at being able to implement, like you said, not like a game plan that's conventional. He, he implements the Foxy game plan with every character that he plays. And it's, it's, so, it's so fun to even just watch him break out a character so you can see how he approaches the character, not how the character is supposed to be played, could be played, etc. He always goes in with his own mind, with his own experiences from life. He implements a lot of things from real life fighting as well which is an interesting strategy behind the Foxy Grandpa that not a lot of people know, is that he implements a lot of real fighting techniques and mind games that exist in real MMA, real fighting situations into fighting games, and it's actually incredibly effective because strike throw, it's actually broken down uh, IRL as well to how he opens up his opponents. He's been, play he's been playing, he's been doing a fair amount. He's been amount. opening up people for a long he time. He has been doing a fair amount of Muay Thai the last few years. And oh, yeah. Anything that really helps the mentality grow, I suppose. Now, King Gambler, I've got to say, it is wonderful seeing him, similar to Han Rashid, yes. start to get these, these big placements that he's always been capable of. You know, even on your own tournament series, the Coliseum, whether it was Injustice 2, MKX, MK11, Gambler's in all of them. Yes. There's, there's well-established fundamentals here because Gambler is a talented, talented player. Very, like you talked about, across multiple titles has only gotten better, I feel like over the years as well. Came out swinging an MKX, was a broodmother Devorah main. Hold on, let's go. 
So no doubt we're going to see a button check here. I was actually going to mention, yeah, I, I'm fairly certain I saw him win with Broodmother recently. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember ever seeing that variation ever in MKX. So Which lovely. is what really surprised me when he broke out in Mortal Kombat 11 with Scarlet. I was like... Looking at, I was looking at Injustice 2, the character he played, how he played, I looked at MKX, and he, he kind of slowly, over time, went from this almost pure rushdown uh, setup character to Green Lantern that was actually a lot more neutral, heavy, zoning oriented, while also having some good rushdown tools, to Scarlet, that he like he like kind of got slower with his with his gameplay in characters and games. And then finally here, going back to Sub-Zero, I think he's going back to his roots a little bit, because I feel like Gambler's playing his best when he's when he's in the rushdown. I love the way he spaces. I, I love the slow on. game too. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yes. Yes! Foxy going on with the Nightwolf. Somewhere in the world, Big D's right eyebrow just twitched. Uh, I'm fairly certain there's some Foxy subs in chat right now that are spamming for the Matoka. For the Matoka. I've got to say, folks, Nightwolf is not a very common offline character for Foxy. That forward two becomes a lot more reactable. However, there is an element of counter zoning here with Sub Zero. Sub Zero Ice Ball just nullified instantly by Reflect every time, every single time. And Foxy, I mean. This is kind of old school Foxy. He grabs it, it, it a lot. Is. Oh man, here we go. Foxy and King Gambler. In in there is another world that exists. Another timeline that exists where we could see the Nightwolf mirror between these two as well. Wonderful whip punish there, King Gambler. That back one was crispy, right? Is that forward one two made its whip? But this one connects. And then oh. armor break! Look away! Oh, oh doesn't doesn't spend it. Doesn't spend it. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that was on the screen. Get ready to look away quite a lot. This is a brutal character. Yes, he is. It's a very foxy grandpa character. That trade shuts down the forward two. Overhead does hit its mark. Similar play style that this character is going to have. Very up close and personal in range of normals. Nightwolf does have the slower overhead, but hey, it's an option nonetheless that will be implemented. The slow start, no reaction to the whiff throw. And overhead hits it. Well, that's, that's what he was looking for right there. You're going to have to watch out. These are two characters that are very prominent with their overhead forward twos. And actually, Fatal Blow. Don't think you're safe, because you're not. Woo! Fully interacts out. Got some space, Foxy. Look for something. He swung so huge there. That get off me. Point. Try to get underneath that jump, and I think, and that's what saves King Gambler. I think Foxy was trying to cheeky little dash under the jump and make it whiff. Very, that's really a forward dash being do. so fast. That's a very common Nightwolf maneuver, but from that angle, must have just been a little bit awkward. King Gambler doing the right thing, establishing that mix forever. With punish. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> that was just an absurd spacing decision to go for that at a space that may have could have whiffed and gotten him punished. Foxy, big brain here early. Lovely throw tech. The whiff throw, another throw tech. <laughs> there There's the dash under. That's what didn't work in the last round, but it will here. Full combo and ending it in command grab gives you much more damage than you'd expect. 34% for that. Oh, no, no, no. And all of those throws, Foxy says, you have just fallen for my gameplay. Hook, line, and sinker. All right, we're building enough meter for that amplified spirit tracks once more. Now, where do we go in this situation? I mean, Ice Ball, that's Reflect all day, every day. And the staggered game, back up into forward two in case you want to try and press. Happy to take those down fours for now, but now this could be mixed territory. Close range, that down three. Oh, no, Foxy takes it. But King Gambler, the right read, holds onto the meter. The step oh! back into the forward two again. Getting Gambler to press. And now that he's got him conditioned to kind of look for the dash up, dash, dash back, it's going to be dash up pressure. There it is. Nice on hand me. Really good throw text from Gambler so far. Really good. And the overhead hasn't been hitting too much anyway. Now where's it going to go? Foxy looking for the reaction here. This has been a very scary situation. Just eats it! Does not expect the jump in to just work too like that. Too advantage on it. They can't jump. Oh man, that low. There is a gap there, I believe, if he goes into it. So you can make a read with a neutral jump. He's going to go into the command. Guys, he's going to the amplification. Whoa! Oh! And thank goodness that brutality is not unlocked, or we'd all be looking away from the screen right that now. That is one of the most disgusting brutalities <laughs> in any of the games. I'm not going to say what it is. Just go and look oh. it up. I'm sure it's on YouTube. However, 
That was such a, it's, it's such an unusual first game there. Gambler over committing, must have just believed it to work there. Foxy missing the combo, however, gets another opportunity. Here we go again, one, 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 command grab. I mean, look at the damage, 38%. I'm gonna make a really bold read here. I think that if Foxy goes up 2-0 with Nightwolf, Gambler might do it. Foxy overcommits to the 1 1 1. We're talking about potentially going up 2 0, but with overcommitments like that, Gambler, a combo drop here. Blocks the forward two. Good stuff. Ooh, and that's back four. Very good. Almost elements of Conqueror, who King Gambler had to defeat to get into top eight. Which is a massive win, too. Nice. Dude, that's, the that's the round. That's the round. That's the round. GG. Foxy's been so Boom. good. On counter poking Sub Zero's pressure, he hasn't let Gambler get away with a lot of the stuff that Foxy himself is implementing. Those dash up pokes in the back dash in the buttons, right? A lot of stuff that Sub Zero likes to do, Foxy's implementing just a little bit better. Like I said, coming into this, it's a similar uh, game plan that, that, that they implement up close. <gasps> oh, that recovered so late that he had that much time to forward to it. Oh, oh God! He did it again! If you're King Gambler, you're thinking, well, this guy just knows what I'm doing. What's going on here? Thankfully, though, a round up, so there's plenty of wiggle room to make these kind of plays. If that third oh! forward two would have connected, oh, another one checks the chin. Damage, damage, damage. There's no point to spend any meter. And there we go again, Foxy. I've got to say, like, this is flawless victory. This is the old Foxy. This mix-up game, which is so unsafe, but he just seems to know when it's going to work. This ain't the Foxy that we really see anymore, I've got to say. Yeah, I'm loving this. Lovely nice one, too. Good call out. There was definitely an element of just letting Foxy party too hard here, and I'm loving the fact that Gambler's now Ooh. fighting back. That dash under is one of the most gorgeous things I've seen tonight, and he's implementing it so well and consistent. If you want to play Nightwolf, eight, you need eight. to learn how to get used to that kind of dash under on the jump in. It's so good. Uh, nice so many, down four. So many Nightwolf players talk about anti airs being one of the weaknesses of the character. No confirm. But one of the strengths being the movement you see on display. Gambler, can you tie us up here? Had some hit advantage, the down four didn't use it. Oh, he's really trying to bait something up from Foxy, I think. Maybe some disrespect. Slight hesitation now from both the raw one two working on that will be the round King Gambler. One to one. Of course. Of course. This is a, I'm gonna go ahead and just pencil in game five. Production just put two two on the scoreboard. We now jump into this next match here. The one 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 does connect. No breaker. Gambler happy to hold on to the meter. Foxy doesn't want to overcommit just in case. The throw's good. Near the corner. Such an interesting matchup so far. Oof. I do feel like the more Gambler gets warmed up in this set, the better we might see. Because there's been a couple of instances where this just haven't been confirms that you would normally see him perform, mostly in the one two. Yeah, and it looks like he can't get anything off of the hit advantage of down four, which is so unconventional for a Mortal Kombat 11 character. Very much so. Oh, the jump in OS just to make it work out for him, get that extra damage. Another open, lovely fuzzy. That yeah, was reaction block by far, that was. Oh, that'll be a hit. That's it. And jumping down two, maybe? No, it's just gonna be a clean combo, spent it anyway. No hesitation from Gambler to take the round and has the first lead of the set. And <laughs> getting Das Boot to get us started. That's how we started round number one, too. A wonderful knockdown. The 1-1 one -one connects. Now Gambler with no break. That is going to allow Foxy to kind of fight his way out the corner, but too far away. Drops the under and side switch. Ooh, just a stagger the back one. I love to see that from subs. Wow! Wow! That was awareness. But again, the combo drop. Two execution errors from Foxy. Doesn't have the meter to get anything else, unfortunately. Lovely flawless block, but ooh, maybe expected the breakaway there from Gambler. Here we go. Even though it didn't work, I still love that decision by Gambler because if he's right on the breakaway, he can worth have a match point. A, worth a go. Absolutely worth a go. But now, even Stevens. One game apiece, one round each. What a pivotal round this one will be. I would say we're at down three range. Someone's pressing something here, and it's going to be Foxy. Another reactionary block on that forward two. This is why Nightwolf not as good offline, purely because of that. Re just easier to react to his overhead. That's why you see the throw. So prevalent. Oh, the reflect is coming into play. Thoughts he's probably been looking for one all set long. And the fact that he had the reaction Whoa. on the one that he gave him, just speak volumes to the skill we see. One, two, three. 
Still a good knockdown, even on Amplified. And Amplified given the best knockdown in the game. However, unless you can set something up, that extra frame advantage is kind of meaningless, especially yes. with a variation like this. That's why Foxy never spends it. We punish, but no meter to extend. Does an early jump too, maybe to mess with it. The throw's fantastic there for King Gambler. Fatal Blow is ready, so he can absolutely pull off the comeback here. Beautiful punish. punish. And Gambler, 50-50 in a dream right now. Oh, so close to the conversion. Good block again. But a good block from Foxy as well. And the armor break. One, Look two, away. three. Oh, Foxy, Grandpa, two to one. That was composure at its best and a block for the win. They keep pausing before, and I'm glad we are. The armor break, Foxy getting the right call out. It was almost poetic. I mean, you block my overhead, I'm now going to block yours. This is the level of play that we're looking at here at EVO 2022. I mean, the game has changed, ladies and gentlemen. What a start to Foxy 2 on the round. Each one of these giving such great knockdown and putting you at the distance. Nightwolf wants you to be in. He's on the hunt right here. He's trying to pounce. Oh, no. That execution's been slightly off for Foxy. Yeah, the dash into the 3-1 is something that Foxy has just not had consistently. And I'm going to be straight. It's got to be something to do with playing loads of Nightwolf online. You go offline. He hasn't used Nightwolf all tournament long. You got to put it in Those like a frames couple frames quicker. Quick, you got to put they're it in gonna, a little bit early. Dude, yeah. they're, they're going to change your combos, man. They're going to feel different. The, the mark of, of seeing that happen is when someone does something too early because they're used to the delay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And that is going to give King Gambler a lot of breathing room that he otherwise shouldn't have. By all means, I mean, it's not his problem. It's definitely on Foxy to tighten up their execution. They're going to ship. No, he's still alive. There's a chance. Command grab. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. I mean, he has to make a hard guess on what the yeah, wake is going to be. He wanted knockdown, too. Oh, minus frames. That's not a free poke. An easy call out for King Gambler. That is a very rare lone forward one for a Nightwolf to do. And he stays alive. And it's a round he'll happily take. One of the main things about Foxy here needs to really tighten up that mid-screen execution. A lot of his damage and his reads, they've been coming from his decision-making. But Foxy, famously, no combos. His tournament execution is arguably some of the absolute worst. <laughs> But it's, it's, the, it's the brain that brings him forward. And that's why Foxy is always such an interesting player. However, King Gambler, neutral jump, lovely read. And now a full combo for the decision. Oh. Oh. Nice. The speed at which they're playing at. I mean, Foxy had just gotten some hit advantage and Gambler with the recognition with the milliseconds to see that he backed off. Get the jump in. And will this send us to a game number five? The breakaway's not gonna matter. King Gambler, the Texan. Tying us up two games apiece. No one in this top eight wants to lose. This is the fourth game five in a row. It simply mathematically, reasonably doesn't get closer than this. Now Foxy's going to take some rather important time out there just to quickly refresh. We're not going to jump straight into a restart match, although I'm pretty sure we'll be jumping into this final game real soon and gambler. This, that game we just saw was the element of, you know, every decision starts to work. And it's just some every good composure read, too. Every read. Yeah. And it's impressive stuff. This final game though, this is where that stress is gonna get tested. It's not easy to be in a situation like this and to have Sub-Zero in your face throwing a low overhead or low that's gonna send you out of the bracket. It's not easy to be in that situation. Here we go. Final game between Foxy Grandpa and King Gambler. Only ones moving on. This is elimination territory. Wow! Foxy okay. Grandpa, who with a victory will set up a run back with Sonic from 2015 MKX Finals here at EVO. King Gambler just trying to keep the Cinderella run going here. It was what, six of eight or five of eight? Five of eight in this top eight catch up. Our brand new finalists. Now Foxy nullifying that ice ball, but everything has been punished so far, Gambler. That time Foxy took out to kind of collect himself, I think Gamma's been thinking about, right, where have I been missing some punishes? Where can I squeeze out more damage? And that's been fantastic for him in this first round. Another down one to challenge Foxy with the flawless block. One, two catches it, and the overhead's great as well, Foxy. This has not been the first round that you want in a final game, but there we go. An opportunity, and this time we just keep the damage nice and simple. Oh, but the hard 
freed from King Gambler. And why not? He had health to work with. Absolutely. That's when those type of reads start to feel a little more comfortable as he gives himself a match point here. His back is to the wall, and Foxy finds a clean jump in. Optimal combos. The execution's there. One, two. Is he going to amplify just for the side switch, maybe? No. I, I would say no. I really think that you know the corner's going to give him some more damage, but that extra bar of meters can be so important for the next sequence. Any kind of punish or hit, you need that bar for the overhead for Gambler. Keeping it nice and safe. The match point for Gambler. Oof. Any commitment there. This would have been a tough situation for Foxy, but stays live and he's pushing him towards it close to the middle of the screen. He's building some space to play with, and that reaction was absurd. Lovely down to him. That was like, that was like an MK2. <laughs> it was. There's the dash under. Is Gambler going to break? Yes, he will. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, that's going to do damage over time. Oh, no. That's 10% just disappearing for free. And now the chip. If Foxy oh. gets hit, though, this is Sub-Zero we're talking about. And he made the read. I guess being a Sub-Zero player yourself. Hey, I'd overhead there. Match point for both players, Aquaman. Come on! It's what Gambler's been on the most. And here we go to my final game. Final round between the two. And even though he's blocked overhead 14 times in a row, he does on the low two. And an absurd flawless block gets Foxy back on top and sends Sub-Zero and Gambler back to the corner. Looking for a whiff punish there, but Gambler quite rightly doesn't overcommit to that string. And the good block on the overhead. This has been such a scary game! The standing one, the instant jump in! No breaker from King Gambler, does not want to get armor broken for another time. You need that bar for wake up, of which the wake up retreat! He gets frozen! Nightwolf gets the reflect! And a full combo now for Foxy, who gets another command grab ender. This is Sub-Zero though! He can always bring it back! They're just been reset here, goes for the low, and hasn't got interrupted, and what a savage Boom. by Gambler. Big damage, and he's doing the Sub-Zero. No! Disrespected to hit him, and it's a down three, and it is going to be a Foxy Grandpa. Foxy Grandpa takes an extremely close match. And I feel like he's just looking for it. Looking for the progression, because up next, with that win, with that win, we're getting an EVO 2015 Grand Final rematch. Sonic Fox and Foxy Grandpa. Let's just look at the bracket. Look at it. Fox and Foxy Grandpa. This is a classic match, and we're going to see it. I can't wait! Is, looking at this bracket, are we witnessing not... I mean, I mean we are. I can say it, because it's there. Are we witnessing the changing of the guard? Because we would have seen that in reverse a few years ago. I don't know about you, Aquaman, but I am Because one of them having... is, is being eliminated in the next round. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they are. But I'm having an amazing time right now because, I mean, it's that combination of old and new, the fact that we haven't had offline MK at EVO for years and years. We're finally back. We'll talk about this more after the break when we come back with more Mortal Kombat here at Evolution. Welcome back, everybody. You're currently watching EVO 2022. Mortal Kombat 11 Top 8 is well underway. And now we're going into our next stage of the Elimination Territory with two matches, Aquaman, that are just unreasonably exciting. So we're starting off Han Rashid versus Rewind. And then after that, Sonic Fox versus Foxy Grandpa, a rematch of the Grand Finals of MKX in 2015. Going the distance in one of the closest that we've ever seen. Two Fox losing a final here. I would definitely say so. I would absolutely say so because the players that are left in this path, every single one of these players could actually beat Sonic Fox. Yes. Because for Fox to now win this tournament, and we're talking about Fox purely because of the path of the returning champ, right? And that everyone's talking about Fox being the one player 
next to Ninja Killer, I suppose, that would be able to beat the Twins and this and that and this and that. There's a lot of players here that Fox would have to get through first. One of these two right here, Foxy up next, and then like both the Twins. <laughs> I mean, like, come on. And then it's a 2v1, just like the entire tournament has been. But you that know is what? kind of unfair. That's a story for another time. That's a story for top three, where I cannot believe that everyone else is fighting for a chance for a <laughs> for a piece of a third of the pie that's going to be in the top three. No but it's going to go no in. how you slice it. Rewind's going to be going in with the old faithful at this point, which is Kano. This Kano variation in particular is kind of disgusting. When we saw him first break out this Kano, it was offline, and he put in the absolute work. It was a 9-5 to five blessing for some of the people in the brackets that I've seen when this Kano's brought out. But Ken, he gets some momentum here. Instead, it's been all Han Rashid. Hasn't let the man play the game. Who stops Kano from playing the game? I argue nearly no one. Now, in this position, a little bit of that bonus damage potentially as we go in. The punish on the bio pool. I mean, that's a 13 frame special move with the range like that. But, I mean, if someone's going to punish it, you know Fujin's going to be the one. A bit of a combo drop there. Ooh, another another one. drop, back to back. One thing I love about rewinds, that was from so far away. That was absurd. I would have gotten hit. There's no way. Still alive with the chip. We've seen the comeback happen before, and that may have been the smartest. Do we, do we call it a mash? He was absolutely mashing reversal right there. And, it was, and it's the smartest thing to do, because it's coming up no matter what, no matter what. Now it's going to be your turn. One thing Rewind's going to have to do here is just tighten up that execution, because so far there's been a lot of damage left on the table. Now it looks like in this round we are starting to get a little bit more warmed up here. Ooh. Another confirm, that forward one for Kano, so good. I think sucked up one of the normals he was trying there with Fujin. Nice block there and punished it at the resources. Get anything crazier? <gasps> Could have picked up there with a bio pull. And one of the things I haven't seen Rewind do a lot so far in this match that I do love about his Kano is the bio pull and nooch, like right there. Oh my goodness, I almost summoned it on command. I mean, just he not doing afraid. Range. Yeah. Not afraid to pull the trigger. Oh wow. Oh, that was, that was the deepest jump kick I've ever seen. I think we just felt that, <laughs> that hard. That bonus, hurt. didn't we? Both of our chests caved in for a second. Hang on a minute, with that grab alone, the Fatal Blow has just become Woo! a win condition. So the double wave dash into the grab. Oh no, is it a win condition or a wind condition? Oh, Either way, it's shut it out of here. Shut I get up, it. Get up, just sit there and take it. It's a down one from me to stay alive. One round apiece. And a very important turnaround there for Rewind. That first round was kind of sloppy, but he'll know it better than anyone. This is the chance now to turn it around and get just a little bit more. And right there is where oh! you, you guys see that was a, a point blank sweep reversal on the dagger, not one you see every day. You can take the plus frames, yes indeed. And I wonder if Fujin has the technology to be able to read the down one acid uh, and walk back and get a punish. You never know, I guess we'll find out if it is a thing. Oh! On with the punish again, that's with a bio pool. It's gonna become ever more dangerous. Hang on a minute, Chemical Burn. Oh, tries to meet him in the air, but Hanji thinking way further ahead there, just knowing, wait, I'm gonna meet you much faster. And he dodged 90% of that flame while being around it the entire time. That sequence uh, was gross. Nice defensive fire there, and I think Han Rashid said, you know what, I'm gonna take it. No, we're not. He what? has not given a damn about what he has put on the screen. Oh, that's GG's. it, back one fatal blow. No, I Missed think that's guaranteed. No, the drop, but he's gonna go and just press buttons anyway, staying aggressive. Rewind, giving him a gift, but taking it anyway. That was a scramble and a half after the drop. You. When you're given an opportunity to almost secure it, you can see Rewinder laughing it off. I mean, it's to have it in your hands and drop it is when it hurts the most. But how many times do we see these guys shake it off in an instant and then just swing immediately after? Now that back one, like statistically, I guess it, you could call it guaranteed, but when you have that early launch and the back one as fast as it is and the fact that the opponent has many times they can break away from that hit stun. And it changes like, the timing of when yeah, you're going to be falling. He would have had to make a call out on when Rashid, like Han Rashid was going to break away there, but being able to immediately <laughs> just... <laughs> Oh, being able to turn around and hit that forward one. Anyway, that's enough for the first game because we're going straight into the second one where a fair amount of uh, strange business has already happened. That forward three being shut down by the chemical burn. But Han Rashid's still able to take a rather respectable life lead here. He has. He's, he's perfectly, perfectly content with this as long as he doesn't get hit by a couple of those daggers. Nice push. 
Oh. There's so many mind games you have to worry about while Fujin's up there just flying, hanging out. Wake up down one. That's a very Kano maneuver, especially when someone knocks you down from a little bit further away. I mean, you're going to challenge it and say, wait, let me, just, let me just test to see if you're going to get anything from this. Dash in forward one. Don't forget, the threat of command grab is always there. Oh. Just trying to bully him, but Han Rashid says, you know what? Patience is a virtue. Why, yeah, why take the risk? I've got more life. you got a fatal blow. Why would I try and get hit here? If, if it becomes a situation, though, with Kano, he's one of the few that really enforces plus frames. There's not many characters that can actually say that they enforce it when Come that string is that. blocked. But then there's the mind game of, is he just going to do the down one and check me, or is he going to take a little bit of risk, like we've seen Rewind do with the double? Now nah, in a minute. There is some of that tech, you know, getting hit by the down one and flawless blocking the chemical burn. We do know that some players are prone to that, making a good call out on it. Rewind, though, turning the tide of momentum. In this case, getting hit by a back one. No need to fatal blow just yet, but the next hit very well could confirm into it. The oh, roll! that's going to be a lot of whiff frames, and this is a massive punish rewind, but it's not going to be enough because it's Kano, but Han Rashid in some light hit advantage, mind you, with that, with that lighter. Look to disrespect. And it's the nail in the coffin for him in the round. Wow! Starting the round off strong with the immediate bio ball, and here comes the plus frames. In this instance, oh, Rishi caught again! This is the turnaround, though! Give me that interactable, mate! Woo! And the down one, you try to jump out. What are you jumping for? Come here! Everything that Rewind was doing to Han, the moment Han got out, he's like, you welcome to jail, my friend! You don't pass go, you don't collect the no! winner! But once again, Rashid is <laughs> getting a really, really good decision. But no, unable to uh -oh. stop this damage over time. The KB removes the flames. Are you kidding me? The one time we're no! it is the raw. There it is. The raw pull of neutral. Just the just do it. Rewind. Get him a Nike sponsorship. <laughs> Rashid is looking at him and saying, dude, you really did that. You really did that. Now, here, yeah. they were in a standoff, half screen, staring each other down with a stare of death. And then Rewind just says, you know what? I dare you to whatever it is you do, let go of block in this moment. Vacuumed. Unbelievable confidence here coming out of Rewind. It's what I expected more in the matchup because what is Fujin going to be doing? Something all the time. And that's what those big active frames and the quick speed of it, like you're talking about, I, I feel like it's going to be a factor in this. It hasn't been as much of a factor as I thought it might be, but it just... What? It gave him that reaction on that one, to say the least. Ooh, the crowd getting a little getting a little wild out there too. They're still going to want Han Rashid to push this one forward. You know, th this is what they're going to want. If he gets one on the board, we might just... Oh, oh, oh again! See, you know, and the player can rewind kind of uh, said something to Han Rashid. What if he went, I'm starting this next match with the bio pool? <laughs> what if that's what he told you? I'm, I'm starting this next match with the bio pool. And then Han Rashid's like, nah, he's not going to do that. He just told me. At the ultimate mind game right there. Is he going to go over it? Wow. wow. Was, that timing looked a little wild. Wonderful punish as well. Now, where do we go in this situation? The forward one, the plus frames. Backing up into the back one. I like that choice, you know, Kano, he's gonna try and do something with that frame advantage. Again, the back one doesn't quite hit its mark. Been a consistent issue for Rewind is getting that back one 100%, but shh, I mean, he's hitting the bio pool, so who cares? There's a wonderful Ugh. check on the sweep too of Fujin. Fujin's used to doing that sweep and, ha and having some space to play with and press and maybe breathe. But Rewind says, you ain't breathing against me today. He's looking for the 3-0 victory. It's been all game fives here. And Rewind says, I'm, I'm tough, finally sick of this. And he's got a match point. This variation for Kano has been a fantastic pick for Rewind because the punish potential. A lot of Fujin's, you know, quote unquote safety is being nullified by this bio pull. And there, Han Rashid probably afraid to go forward anymore. Wave dash, start a wave dash because you never know if that bio pull is just going to be there waiting for him. Plus frames once more. Ooh, the low works. Catches him slipping. Trying to chase it down with the blade. Can't quite find it, but he's still done respectable damage. Get back into your own flames there, mate. Oh, the trade, interactable. Ooh. Whip punish! Once that, I mean, it had to have been like, right as the active frame of the back two left the screen. 
This is all rewind in a potential final round to stand for with some good pushback as well. This is a bullying. I mean, don't forget as well that the command grab is always here. It's not really something that Rewind has used in terms of mix-up. He's much happier to just chip away and, well, clearly do what we're seeing right now. But at any moment, could pull Ooh. the trigger on that command grab. Oh, no. That's really bad. Two knives back-to-back -back right now. You're done. See you later. Han Rashid is eliminated by Rewind. But I've got to say, Han Rashid in particular, this was one hell of a performance this weekend. And I'd go as far to say all year round. So big congratulations. We're certainly proud of him, and so is the crowd. But Rewind moving on. Now going up against whoever wins between Sonic Fox yes. and Foxy. So we're getting a six set of matches regardless. Top four is going to be insane. Again, no matter how it unfolds here, this top eight has just been sensational. And it's going to continue with the one that we've had circle start highlighted in parentheses since it has been set during the break. Catch up over here. Couldn't contain his excitement. I mean, we couldn't. We know this. 2015, this was the grand final that really was one of the first to put internationals on that they can be the dominant force in NetherRealm Games. They can win the biggest tournaments well, in NetherRealm Games. So I've have you know, that weekend there were two UK players that did that. <coughs> it was a long time ago, though. I'm extremely washed up now. However, I think that back in the day, there was a time in Mortal <laughs> Kombat X. We, we were hoping that you would have had yours on here. Oh, That's I didn't know you'd get that this weekend. If I knew, I'd have brought mine. And mine has... Community uh, one, guys. Community one. Mine community has finalists written on it, not community. Uh -huh. I mean, mine has it's finalists written on it. It's still a great achievement. I mean, it says finalists it's still, on it. It's still a great achievement. But, it, but it says community. But my point was that, side effect, So, back in the day, there was a time where Foxy and Sonic Fox were, like, the two. Yes. They were the two best. This is a rivalry where these two players have so much respect for each other. The literal Fox rivalry. Very much so. Because EVO 2015 Grand Finals, the largest pro league for the ESL Pro League for Mortal Kombat X. It was season three, grand finals again. Uh, it's like they were two of the, the most significant tournaments in the history of, of modern Mortal Kombat. And they were grand finals in both of them. And Fox has consistently gone on record to, you know, say that Foxy's one of their favorite players in this community. Um, Hell, going back constantly to... Constantly gone back and forth. I mean, I don't know what to expect from this set, though, because they haven't played each other in some time. In a long time. And the last time I do remember them playing was one of my favorite matches back from year one of MK11 at Combo Break of the very first tournament. Foxy <sighs> that was so really Aaron let Black that one go. Kung Lao. Yeah, it, it, it was, what, the Scarlet pick from... Fox, I believe, in that one as well. I know, we certainly saw it against Samij. I know we definitely saw it there. I don't remember if it was against Foxy, too, but I, I remember Fox going through so many characters in that one. I'm kind of looking at this matchup, though, and thinking, is this a button check, or are they actually doing a Sub-Zero mirror? Foxy was on his phone, so that, that, I, that could have been, in, I don't know, some next-level mind games of, well, of, 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 like, be on your phone while the round starts, and then boom! Well, we know that Foxy is... Well, Sub-Zero is one of his main characters. Oh, there's the handshake. Was that a restart match? No, Fighter Select. Imagine a Sub-Zero mirror. I mean, it, it actually would have... It's a possibility because Fox it, was practicing yeah. Sub-Zero a lot in the lead-up to this. They were both at... Uh, weren't they both at Summit? Was Foxy yes. at Summit? Because if I remember correctly, they were both sitting down arguing about is, is Sub-Zero's 4 too reactable. That was a day one argument a long time between ago. these two, yeah. But now we're getting a... Wait. Uh-oh. Hang on. Wait, 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 wait. Chat knows what time it is. Robocop mirror match. Are you down with the OCP? I yeah. mean, they do yeah, you play... Know me. They do play drastically different oh, variations. Wait. Oh, the crowd's it's the really mirror. excited for this. It's the mirror. I, I've never seen Fox's Robocop. Fox actually has a very, very good Robocop. I've seen it. I've seen it in action. This is going to be an interesting mirror match. Here we go. Sonic Fox in the white, and then Foxy Grandpa in the black and damaged. That white suit's kind of clean, I'm not going to lie. Now, but Foxy's looking Robocop, like creepy, though, <laughs> has, has seen some stuff, you know? Sonic looking three, look like three quarters of a stormtrooper. Now, the difference in moves here. Sonic Fox is going to have that sort of, like, wrist cannon, and in doing so, is going to have a regular sort of grenade in the shoulder cannon. Foxy's going to have the the spikes, right? And on Amplify, will give the gas. So they have similar moves, but they will function very differently. Really, the key point is that grenade shoulder. 
And this has just been a war of literal attrition here, full screen. A complete different match than every single one in the top eight. This is this, this, this is a full screen footsie battle. Ooh! I feel like that could have been a KB if, if Foxy was like dedicated to it, but it might have been a waste, especially with how weak he currently is. Looking to dash in. That was either a dash in mid or a dash in command grab, and he made the call out. The perfect call out. Is this, is this Fox sending a message that I'm, I'm going to do unto you what you have been doing to others so infamously on Twitch for the past couple of years and arresting people with this Robocop? I mean, I'm just happy that we're seeing a Robocop <laughs> mirror and Evo Top 8. This is what I live for. Now, the anti-crime spikes aren't going to quite get the damage as it is a bit too far away from Fox, however. That amplified straight rocket had some really good block advantage, it looked like, because he checked uh -oh. him with the low shot so quick. Hello, he's walking him. Yeah, nothing came out. Yeah, the spikes must have still been there on the, uh, the ground behind him. Oh, the dash in regular throw. We're having a shootout. Gets him with the 50 cal. Got some space. Oh, Fox, quicker on the draw with that low auto nine. And you see how big the hitbox is on that, that landing explosive grenade versus the strip, right? Look at that. It's it's like something that you have to hold at a certain point, especially off a certain knockdown, because it is like a meaty full screen. And this is all Fox who has just implemented the better zoning from the looks of things, even though he had a high projectile, which is considered kind of a weakness to try to zone Robocop But with, with. these two variations, Fox's variation was better at zoning out Robocop. You know, everything's gonna send to the full yep. screen. The grenade is gonna give you that little extra element of utility, I think. Because but here's the thing. Now we're it, starting to see the Katana. This it, is a character that Fox, yes. Foxy has been playing for a long time. How they talked about character, how he debated character is Katana. In this matchup, I don't know what to make of it. You know, will Katana have options to kind of deal with Robocop here? She has what does he fan. have there? How about say, is that is that low fan and then the side, the uh, stance? Yeah, Foxy, Foxy likes the half blood stance and the low fan. It's an extremely dry character, but it does do pretty say, decent up close. Against just Robocop, having the though, low this fans is where decent. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'm thinking, though, is against Robocop in particular. I don't know how it's going to fare. Let's find out. Fox, Here we go. Fox already knowing, I guess, that the low fan might be a problem. I see Fox trying to close that gap immediately. Yeah, it looks like there's still a, a decent amount of damage there. And Fox being able to turn this one around will require meter to do so. So man, a lot of, lot of block advantage on those sides. Oh, the ads here. Yeah. Okay. Well, one of the few setup characters that we're going to see in this top eight. Oh, very much. Now, hang on a minute. Oh, the <laughs> dashing command grab. Foxy <laughs> trying to challenge it, but this is where the mix up's real. The wake up short hop, though, says no. He almost read that Sonic Fox was going to be a savage and do it a third time in a row. I like that. Ooh. Oh, no fatal blow for you. It almost worked, though, if he had the 10 frames. Foxy has to be very careful here not to get hit by anything. Anti-air is good, though. Robocop and the floaty jump. Poor Ooh. old Alex Murphy. He's not even wearing his jetpack. Strong start. For the Empress of Outworld. Spoiler alert for MK11, but this is this game hasn't been out for a while. It's been out for three years, man. If you haven't played it, now down two. Fox with the read. This Wake up, down four. This is the second. 190 is not the worst. Damage D. Okay, now another 190 will be. That's nice gonna be good it. though. Now will Fox break? There's the armor break. And that booty just did 447 damage. Wow, what a perfectly timed uh, time to do it. A light breakaway attempt from Sonic. Come on, Ooh, that grab. was kind of gross. Back to full screen, though. Something that Fox well, and Foxy combined aren't going to be too worried about. This becomes a real interesting situation. The Fatal Blow is again ready, but who's going to do it? I'd say Fox is more likely. Oh, Foxy holding on to it, though. A little too long. There was some, there was some mind games being played. A lot of them, too. Richard works out. He's going to throw it close. Could have comboed. There it is oh, again. No, again. What is going on oh, here? This is, this is ugly. I, I this is even uglier. Oh, that was the ugliest jet. <laughs> this is falling apart. Oh my goodness. What is this matchup? Both on paper and execution. We are witnessing something wild. I don't know what's going on here. 
Either way. It does like... Oh, there's the mid, full screen. That's really good for Fox now. Foxy had a couple of opportunities in that last round, and I, I really still, to truth be told, don't know what happened. Let it rock. So the short oh, That blow. was just sensational, but 1100. Robocop. Robocop has 1100 health. Highest health in the game. And this is like off. the weakest fatal blow in the game, too. Big Murph might be living, and he's living quite generously. Oh, Foxy, he's having to show so much respect. Anti air has the health left. Oh, no, Fox doesn't get the low auto nine, the standing one. That was an accident. Oh, no. Oh, my. And it would have had the speed to do it. It would have been quick enough. The fan not going to outspeed the bullet. Fox showing at least one little bit, one little bit of hesitation, of anything. Because you know Fox gives you very little to work with as an opponent. Foxy looking super com composed over there. That's probably some of the loudest EDM in that ear that you've ever heard in your life. He's probably, ble that eardrum's bleeding. Absolutely. He's got, he's got Goro twerking on in an infinite loop. <laughs> and now Fox going for yet another character change. And this just seems to happen all the time when these two go head to head. This in this is, case, Fox this is, is going to be classic. picking the Shang Tsung. I think if I recall, this is kind of like the more combo focused Shang Tsung, being able to just convert and pick up. I know that was uh, very much a variation of Shang Tsung that Fox enjoyed to play a few, about a year ago, perhaps. Yes. Maybe less, but we'll see. Well, Fox. Oh, no, never mind. Having this ground eruption, I'm completely wrong. Fox really got a taste for, for some Shang when Arn Kratos came over uh, real early in uh, the pro competition year one to NEC. Was a hit from taking that. And that, that, that was kind of the rise of Shang. Now uh, this is going to be another ranged battle. The ranged battle has been kind of the entire series, but the characters have drastically changed how that's played. Now the existence of the smoke shake does mean that Foxy is not going to be able to kind of compete with these projectiles. It's to jump in, lovely Antia. And as well, but the movement by Foxy has been so impressive. Got to make a note on that. Even with Katana, who's got really stubby movement, able to make it happen. And, woo! What's crazy is that they're playing matchups that I almost never see, and yet we're seeing some really good knowledge from these two. It's where the experience comes out to play, I suppose. Fox is just about to get Fatal Blow. A little bit harder to secure that Fatal Blow with the ground eruption. Ermac, like the Ermac lift makes it much more viable, but yeah, from this range, there's no way you're securing it. Now what's Foxy doing? Holding on to it, maybe baiting out. You want to expect a dive kick perhaps, and then here comes Ooh. the projectile. <laughs> That's going to be the round. Right when he went for the side, Fox goes for the toes. He's coming in. Taking the plus frames, and that, that's just a whole big bag of holding that for Foxy. And the strikes, one of the best shimmies that exists in this game, that 1-1 one, one of Shang's. I mean, just you can clearly safety see, behind it. You can clearly see where the direction of the Shang Tsung is coming out. Being Ooh. able to out zone, nice conversion. We're going to take the damage for what it is. There is a KB requirement attached to that that does cause it to launch. Yes. One of the coolest looking launchers. Oh, it's very cool. Gives really good damage, too. Just a second. That was so good and almost a perfect stand one from Foxy. Holding that 1 1 game. The stagger of the 1 1 for Shang Tsung, so good. 1 1 4, 1 1 2. All of it's fantastic. Overextend Fox, good defense. The jump back as well, just to, say sh just to shut it down. He's placing those sides really well. He's just getting no offense off of it. And we saw earlier, every time it connected, not getting the combos. Let's get oh. <laughs> More knowledge there. Just dashing in the delay. Fox, no reason to hesitate, really, or press. Yeah, Foxy's looking for it, but there's just so much respect being shown. And now one last chance, but honestly, this is almost checkmate with the range. And there will be a ground eruption. No doubt this will encourage another character change from Foxy, which introduces a weird situation. What character are you gonna pick here? Because Fox will get the last counter pick. Shiva. Probably not, but a man can dream. <laughs> <laughs> in before Shiva wins the set. So the Shang Tsung locked in for Fox, has to go in for this character once again. But knowing that you're going up against ground eruption Shang might heavily influence the character you pick here. 
Now, because if you were against a combo-heavy Ermac Lift Shang or this one, very mm -hmm. different characters would appear. You know, you'd have to use a completely different character here. Who's it gonna Ooh, be? Oh, he's thinking about the Lao. No, no, he hasn't played Lao in oh, about he's two years. About oh, they're talking about it too. Foxy doesn't really play Shang anymore. I'd be surprised if he picks it. Foxy's saying, oh no. My mate. heart tells me Ro Robocop. It really does. Because you're, yeah, the shake's there, but ultimately, yeah. it's gonna be very hard for Shang Tsung to constantly ground eruption. You're gonna have to hit like a million shakes to get Foxy to stop shooting. Yes. <laughs> And here we go. What will be here we a go. comfortable lead for Sonic Fox in the runback of runbacks. These two met in grand finals. They have competed for the Evo Championship before. That Robocop skin is foul. <laughs> What's up with like Is that like cream gold with yellow? Head? I mean, the last one was kind of wild too, having the white body with the dark, uh, like chromatic metal head. Either way, we're going back into this matchup and another zoning battle. This has genuinely been a zoning fest all series long, but you can kind of see the science behind it. There's the immediate command grab. Shut this one down. Andy crime spikes. Not going to do what he wants. Waits for the shake. Let's it whiff. There's going to be a lot of matchup knowledge here. You know, Foxy, it wouldn't be the first time he's fought this character. Trip guarding in there with the command grab again. Spending a lot of meter to do Excellent. so, but a likely, a comfortable one so far. And a wonderful start. <laughs> Fox not giving a damn about the frames right there, and he sends Foxy flying back to the screen. He barely missed space. Ground eruption there. And, yeah. and that oh, is gorgeous. That's, Foxy. That, that's one of the main utilities of the spikes, and they, they force you to jump now. Fatal blows available. The throw tech. And it has another one. Oh, an eruption! Oh! That was a little too smooth from Foxy Grandpa coming to life. And so is the crowd behind him. Two throw techs in a row, and then the immediate dash down one. That was a risky play, but one that worked out. Fox doesn't quite get the. Conversion there. And the preemptive that's up with punish. And now what's it gonna be? Neutral duck. Oh he knows. Fox has seen Foxy play this game before. He knows that the grab after the, the mist is always there. Always, always there. That's the first check. So Foxy was ready. Oh he's I love the defense too. It's so quick to read. Like he's reacted to jumps that he knows that he can't dash under and then looks for the flawless block. That is kind of ridiculous if you think about it. Now, with the Fatal Blow ready to go, there is an opportunity here for Foxy. But he has to pull all the right decisions out of his bag because Fox, one mistake! Too far away still to get anything else. It just has to be zoning, zoning, zoning. Whoa. And the preemptive shake! What a choice there from Fox. And now, match point for Sonic Fox. Are we going to go game five? Are we going to keep tradition of these two? Or is this where Fox moves on? This is where Fox says, you know what? Might not have competed in quite some time, but guess who's still in the upper echelon of MK competition? Can Sonic close out here? Are we going the distance? The jump kick, breaking the game for a second, not knowing which side to convert on. And he's making it so hard to guess for Foxy Grandpa, chucking him out of the corner there. Foxy getting a little bit of breathing room. But the one thing about the strip that's been detrimental for Foxy is that it lets Sonic Fox do something. Yeah. When Sonic Fox was playing Robocop, that bomb was constantly checking. You have to hold it and the low shot afterwards. But Foxy, uh, sorry, Fox being able to do something lets him do stuff like this. Holds even, on even to the, the shake stuff. this time. Knows that Foxy's been kind of letting it whiff preemptively. And yeah, that's a full combo. And no break either. Gorgeous. Very respectable 30% and yeah. That's the last break Foxy's gonna get here. Oh, the knowledge! The knowledge! Oh my good lord, the fatal blow right through the ground eruption. Ed Boon 209's gonna send us back into fighting. Character select, oh my god. <clears throat> it's, it's the fact that he like knew that the first ground eruption was spaced at a point where the second one was going to whiff. There's a, there's, it's like a magical sweet spot uh -oh. that he just knew was Dude. going full circle, Aquaman. Oh my God. Fox, Foxy, both animals. It's a shootout. <laughs> oh my God, the garish bright purple Robocop. Oh, good Lord. Someone's getting arrested. There's a counterfeit Murphy. By the, who's the, it gonna be? By the big purple dinosaur, big Murph Robocop. Oh, here we go, the final frontier with the two legends. Go the Robocop mirror. Again, the, the crowd is behind this Robocop mirror, I tell you.
They're they not really behind are. RoboCop as a character, but they're behind the mentality of the mirroring for top four at Evolution in a game five. Did two of the most iconic names in competitive Mortal Kombat history, folks. And it's what they're trying to make here a little bit more. Oh! Okay. That was an interesting game. And now we begin where we left off. Now, Foxy is going to get some sort of prior information. He knows that he's not really going to be able to completely zone this matchup. He's going to have to get in because Fox's variation will outzone him. And it is, it's the grenade. The grenade is the key factor. And right there, did the strip, but then he got hit by the amplified low shot. So it's a detriment in that situation. He's trying to get Fox to move, but if Fox has the health lead, he says, all these trades are in my favor, big boy. Now he is going to be able to get the spikes off a low auto 9, thankfully. So that's one of the instances he can get it, but in the neutral, definitely not. Now Foxy is going to have to put himself back into this. The knockdown once again. Oh, the delayed mid, so good from Sonic Fox. And look at that, had to hold it and hold the low shot afterwards. Now, Foxy was looking to confirm that maybe. The breakaway. Risky play to do it. Oh, especially now. Oh, and he just about couldn't take it. Sonic Fox is a match point again. The Robocop mirror. We began here and we're going to end here. Oh, oh shot oh. for shot for trading bullets. We're trading bullets for sweating bullets here at Evo. Low shot. Low auto nine. Do it again. This is for the justice of the OCP. Uh, You're under arrest, uh, dirtbag. Oh, Foxy lost the meter. Ow! Ow! God, for the love of God, watch your feet. That's Ooh, in regular finally. throw. I like that. A change to the pace that has been a shootout. This is an old school. I feel like we're in a Western. I'm sitting up on the balcony of the saloon, watching these two oh, duke it out for the God. championship. There's the escape. Fox tries to get out. Foxy chases it down. They've both got a fatal blow, but this is fatal blow to kill. If Fox lands this, they will move on over Foxy. The dash in, but the push back again. Fatal blow is in play. We've seen the reaction. No! Good play, Sonic tried to rob. Not able to do so. Now it's Foxy. Start back into the wall. Oh Can't take a trade. God. Final game, final round. Only one of these two is going to move on in this bracket. Elimination territory, the Robocop. And here we go, right Ow! back where we started. Oh, it's like the dead shot mirror of old. Da, 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 da. I'll stop just in case of DMCA, but here we go. <laughs> oh yeah, keep it under 25 seconds, we'll be all right, I think. What Another a short read. Up read from Foxy. He's been so good on it on the command grab of the mirror. He's got a health lead, really for the first time in the mirror because of it. With punish again. In this case, just takes the damage, tries to bait the breakaway from Fox, but Fox wise to it. Now, where is this gonna go? That one knockdown, really good news for Fox. That makes things a lot closer. Fatal Blow is ready, but that also means that Foxy's gonna get the Fatal Blow too. Hesitant to do anything. No punch. Wait a minute! One didn't have the bar, but it's gonna be shot! It was deep as by it! I got him off a millimeter! And unbelievable! Fox can't believe it! What? Fox, he can't believe it! We can't believe it! Oh, and what happened? Even what on earth happened there? Was it spikes? Spikes! He did close spikes, and it either... Aquaman. I don't, I don't, no. think, I don't, I don't think it whiffed. No, no, it no, looked no, like no, it no, whiffed. No, 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 no. But he died in the, no. in the middle of it. Aquaman. The fox, the fox finish just happened to Fox by Foxy. Sonic Fox won Evo 2015 by cow drops that Fox changed the achievement. On. Hence the achievement name. And now the Foxy years finish. Later, Foxy, the Foxy does finish. the Fox finish on Fox. Unbelievable. Evo, baby. Let's we're go. We're back. Oh my god! Y'all thought Mortal Kombat was dead? Guess again! Just like all the competitors have been doing in the bracket. I'm happy. I'm happy. We've got the bracket. Let's see, let's see who's left in this tournament. Oh my <laughs> good lord! That just sets up another classic, followed by, guess what? Another classic. I don't care how this unfolds. This is incredible. Rewind versus Foxy Grandpa. One, two, three, four, five. Nicholas. Five's already. Scorpion Fox. Look at this. Look, is look at the top, top to bottom four. in round one. You could have rolled some dice and this top eight would have been 100% different. Right. Can, can we breathe? <laughs> we can, and it's just in time. We've got an ad break. We'll be back with more Mortal Kombat. Go get a drink or something. We're doing the same thing. See you in a bit. Top four coming up.
We hope that you guys were able to catch your breath after the classic that was just delivered to us by Foxy and Fox. Fox getting Fox finished in, in EVO here to be given the lowest placement in Mortal Kombat 11 that Sonic Fox has ever had. To the point that the lowest placing that Sonic had coming into this top eight ever, lowest placing ever in MK11 was second. Which is one hell of a statement, I think. And with that actually means that we're not actually going to have, oh sorry, we're going to have a new Mortal Kombat champion at EVO New for the first time yes, in new many MK years. Champion. If I'm not mista mistaken, I think it's 2013 mm -hmm. from DJT. Well, we, we, we have one shot at a returning Netherrealm champion with Rewind winning Injustice 2. Yes, sir. But you're right, Mortal Kombat. Ever since the dawn of time, it, it was Perfect Legend, Perfect Legend, DJT, Sonic, Sonic, and Sonic. In order for MK for Mortal Kombat 9, X, and 11. That changes today because now we have our winners' finals between the two legends in the making, Nicholas and Scorpion Prox. 17 years of age, hungry for competition, and already cementing themselves as some of the absolute greatest that we have in the world right now. Catch up. Is that, is that right in that? Have there been only six Evos for, for Mortal Kombat? Three for nine, two for X, one for 11, offline? I believe so. I mean, yeah, there, there were the three that we had for Mortal Kombat, uh, and then uh, Mortal Kombat 9, sorry. Yep. Then we had the, yeah, 2015, 2016. Because you really have to factor in the Injustice, right? There was that year where MK9 and Injustice 1 did share. Yep. And they, they were both at a tournament, and then that kind of finished afterwards, where it was then very much just the latest Netherrealm game was the game that was at EVO. That's right. And But it's crazy that <sighs> Sonic has won half of Mortal Kombat EVOs. It's ridiculous, isn't it? But exciting in that now, we're going to have a brand new champion. Yes. Only four players remain in this bracket. And this that's is Nicholas and Scorpion Prox that you see before you. I and think then that's after why this... the energy is where it is amongst oh, not just us, but the crowd. I mean, everyone, when we go out there, everyone's kind of just on the edge of their seat out of excitement. There's the energy that's in the, in the room of, you know, there being this sense that things are progressing as a community. We got new blood coming in and for the community to be coming together in the year three of the game where we are not used to being in the situation. I hope this is a button check. I uh, know this will be. I think one of them picked OCP's finest and there's literally no chance anyone's picking that. So. How big of a troll would it be if they did the Robo here? I mean, if one of them's playing OCP's finest, that variation is not very good, and I'm saying that to be generous. Yeah, exactly. They're just button checking. There you go. Oh no, that looked like optimal Robocop gameplay to me. <laughs> Two instant jumps. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah, the walk-up grab as well. Oh god. That narrows if he hits a mix. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> okay. Okay. We we get it. We get it. Why did he just do that in a button check? Because they can. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the answer, because they can. <laughs> but now the button checks are going to be concluded, and we are officially going to find out which of these two players is going to be the first to Strap. join Grant. Wait. Wait, actually, Ooh. is this actually going to be a... What? If, if you guys didn't watch the past two grand finals of uh, Combo uh, Breaker and CEO... Wait a minute. You will never know what to expect and do expect some mirrors between these two. Well, I, I saw Nicholas go in with the Buzzsaw variation, which is Buzzsaw and Possessed Hat. I didn't catch the Scorpion Prox variation. I've never seen a Buzzsaw mirror. I'm not going to lie. If it's a Buzzsaw mirror, I don't know what's going on. It, it, that, that's what's going to happen. Look at this. Hat. Ah, Ooh, no, mind. Okay, yeah, it's different. It's different. However, that's a lovely conversion. Looking for the instant jump in. Might have been a little bit more. Getting caught out by the 2-1. Now, unfortunately, folks, once again, I believe we did go for a bit of a reset here. Hence, the health bars aren't lowered. Rest assured, they'll lower it oh, after yeah. this game, I imagine. Now, if not, we'll keep an eye. Another headline coming into this particular match, because they do have some history between each other now. They have split grand finals. Catch up. It was uh, Scorpion Prox taking it 3-2, 3-2 in CEO, and it was Nikolas taking it at Combo Breaker. Now, this is an interesting development because we have the buzzsaw variation on the side of Scorpion Prox, and it will be Nicholas using 
uh, the Z hat, and importantly, spiritual guidance, which is going to give a lot of meterless combo potential outside of the spin. Was it spiritual guidance, or did he throw a possessed hat right there? Was that just the regular hat that, that hit that eye? Well, there's definitely spiritual guidance. I saw it. My eyes don't deceive me. There it is! Hey! There's the possessed hat! Woo! The win! Full combo incoming and the break. Oh, the break later. That was that looked reactionary to me. That was just insult to injury. Uh -oh. And that one was just right in the moment, catching the whip punish. Ooh. Oh, but the one two way too fast. And one of the benefits of spiritual guidance one two one being a built in or oh, should be the on block one two comes out on a hit one two one comes out. That with spiritual guidance meterless launch is such an insane level of reward. The grab, and now Fatal Blow becomes very dangerous indeed. Got it there barely with the interactable. And that space knows he's not safe with this lead. Cancel. Cancel. Challenged immediately though. I mean, they, they clearly played this matchup once or twice, trying to go for the safe approach that one too. The built in auto should be like I mentioned before. There's the fatal blow though, and that's going to give us a round apiece wow. in a continuation of these bizarre matchups that the twins bring forward. And just a pickup that only someone that looks to be a master of the character would pick up as the Z hat awkwardly anti air still gets the conversion. And it's solid stuff from both of the twins to get us started from Chile. Look at those flags on the scoreboard. These two twins have really shaken up the global Mortal Kombat community. And I personally thank them for it. Always nice to see just the progression of our community, the new generation. There's the flawless block, tries to go for an instant dive kick. Oh, oh no! Another one. We now, saw that in the last round. With that being said, I can't wait to root against them here in a couple months. <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting for them now, but then you'll remember that you are in fact an American, Mr. Aquaman. Oh, that's right. I'm going I'm to I'm need us to step it up in the, in the next one, guys. Oh. Although our hopes oh, still cheeky. remain. As Rewind, the lone American here at EVO, still that, alive. That charge and the fake out there on the airborne. Oh, oh, escape failed, was ready. And that is going to equalize this. Now, this grab's not going to kill, but it's going to create a weird situation. This is Buzzsaw, and there's loads of meter. Oh, just a regular projectile. Back it up and letting it go. <laughs> no, the what was that? What on oh, earth no. was that? The patient waiting for the teleport, moving out of its range. Had to be an input here, right? I mean, surely. Or I, I don't know what else it could have been. Did, he dialed it in like he knew it was going to be a punish, and it looked like he was a frame or two off from the punish itself. I have no idea. I mean, clearly that was premeditated because you didn't move out of the way. Kung Lao is sexy. stuck reappearing where he was at the time. So that's clearly matchup knowledge, but just didn't get the punish. Mm. I, I liked the the kind of tech that we saw, which was the, the, the forward movement. And he just let Kung Lao swing. And he got to a range where I think the, what the throw is going to whiff, the two that comes out of the teleport, that's this massive arcing swing with the hat that hits really far. Looked like he was outside of range of that too. So it looked like some good anti-Lao spacing. I love watching these twins too because sometimes I learn stuff to implement in my game. Very much. You, you're going to see it with these two. More times than I write down stuff I can't do though, which kind of sucks. <laughs> That's why we're here, mate. That's why we're washed up, bro. But I tell you what. I love what these two bring forward in competitive because they clearly play together what feels like the entire cast. That was the first... You know, when I saw them play for the very first time, it was an online regional for Latin America. They were in grand finals. Thank you so much to uh, Dijon uh, from Top Set Day Games, who has sponsored them and gotten them out here. Met, that has pretty much run the Latin American Mortal Kombat community. Shout out to Dijon and a bunch of other tournament organizers down there. Tolki, who's here in the building. But in that grand final, they were random hidden selecting and playing better with the character that they got and the moves that they got, which weren't even tournament normal to see better than anyone I've ever seen in my life. And that was the first taste I got of them and why I predicted them to do so well even at the first tournament that they showed up at. It's unbelievable. It truly is, it, however. It kind of pissed me off. I was like, people can't be this good. Oh, wow. And there's that meatless combo that we were talking about. And, oh. <laughs> and now, while we go into this match, I want to talk about why this variation is becoming something that is, while not common, still considered to be a bit of an underrated variation. 
the Z hat and spiritual guidance. Spiritual guidance really doesn't require a whole lot of meter at all. That was just... Which means <laughs> yeah, you can save all of your meter for the Z hat pressure. And that's where things become really interesting. However, the big deep jump in plus frames maybe off this. Man, this looks like some MKX pressure right there. The whip that kick in the corner to kind of set up the ambiguous jump in. That was sexy. Get about to oh, the down two, hitting nothing. Ooh, spiritual damage, look at this. Oh my lord, 40%. 40% and a meterless once again. Boom. Boom! Spending it. Oh! For the, the setup, damage. That the sequence was just a piece of art. Oh! He got to still picked up the other way. That was sensational. And it's given Scorpion Frog some life. Wake up forward one. The stagger that's oh! very scary in the double hit. He, went to, he was trying to toss the hat. He said, put that thing down. Hold on a second. You stay right there. One, one round of peace once more. <laughs> if that would have come out, what, what could have happened? The mind games. Flawless blow. It's optimal. That's what we're always talking about. That anti air was clean. Now going to allow Scorpion Prox to get some all important corner carry. The buzzsaw, the flawless block, and the buzzsaw to say no. And there's the meatless pickup again. Good lord. The character mix ups. We're getting tricky here, Aquaman. I'll tell you what, Emery. What is going on? It's like you're talking about, it's it's madness that's occurring, but the level that we're seeing, the execution, the combos, everything about it, the speed that they're playing at. It's miraculous. Scorpion Brock's trying to tie this up. Doesn't want to lose to his brother twice in a row. Nikolas really put a statement on this bracket with the victory over Fox, but can he beat his brother again? It's 1-1. Last time I saw them play, it was a game of swap, swap, swap. But with how things are going right now, are we just going to go Kung Lao all the way here? It's incredibly even, it must be said. Just like the God, so many hats, Aquaman! Oh, we got we try to be optimal. Hey, Not this quite. Is, this is a hat neutral and we're just we're just experiencing it. Flawless block, flawless block! Get ready to keep hearing that sound. And yes, he probably tried to walk up and flawless block that. I wouldn't be surprised to catch I'm, up. I'm positive that's what happened, which is why the delay was a bit longer than most. Possessed hat. Trying to press buttons after it though, I mean you normally take Possess Hat, misses the combo and that's a full punish! Nicholas has to be very careful with those down two par things. Yeah, only dropping the tightest combos that exist with the character. These boys are trying to go... That wasn't intentional, that must have been Z Hat. Must have been. Ooh, not quick enough on the Fatal Blow. Still flawless blocks on reaction. How? It's so fast! It's built into these no! kids. No! No! Tries to wake a fatal blow and the challenge says, no, sir. This is my round. Nikolas back on top. In a bizarre battle of the ancient Lao spirits and hats that have a mind of their own. You gotta watch out for that spiritual guidance projectile. If I'm not mistaken, hitting it on the absolute max distance allows that crushing blow to come out. At least I'm fairly certain that's the requirement. Oh. It has been some time since I've seen it in action. How many up twos are we gonna see with a lot of people are flawless blocking? No, that one! Hello. Oh, there's the minus frames being challenged by the one, two, one. The that's, side switch as well. That's something that loud players are used to getting away with. Murder. Whipping that dive kick in front of your face and getting away with buttons. The reaction of these kids. Three flawless blocks in a row! You can't even take a turn! I mean, if they're flawless blocking their down twos and a button check, you know when this match is live, we're gonna see some sauce. And sauce, we will be witnessing one round of peace here. And again, this is that turning point. Counter hit, that's a conversion by far. Dive kick or no dive kick? Woo! Woo! I don't know what that normal was, but I've never seen it before. It's looking forbidden, even on the drop, has the big lead, another throw. Do -do 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 Drops combo and only does about 40% damage. Oh, that's a, oh, tries to pick it up. Not quite though. Did you they see were, the flawless were, block? Both of them were doing it. They're, they're both just so ready. And that's why we talk about them being like a mirror. I was about to be flabbergasted. I am flabbergasted. You learn something new every day, or in this case, many things. Early jump kick challenged by the grab. Wonderful choice there from Nicholas. The walk up throw, beautiful throw tech. We always say this is the pivotal point, right? It's one game apiece, one round into this game. Whoever wins this officially takes that lead. The checks. Oh no. Not one of Devorah's billion children. Misses the flawless block. 
Bad time to miss it, but there's the confirm and the fatal blows ready. One quick one, two, and this is over the fatal blow! Oh, oh, what a pick up! Oh, Aquaman! Oh, off of another! Put it on the long list of sensational flawless blocks that these two have put on display. It's just good fighting game everything to see what they're doing right now in this game because I know from a viewer standpoint seeing those mechanics at their best has to be sensational and now we're going into character select not particularly convinced it'll be Kung Lao all the way but it could be but it, this is normally that point right that turning point to change variation or character in this case Liu Kang I was asked yesterday by Persia on the Sony uh, broadcast over there at the lounge, was asking me what's different about the meta in Mortal Kombat 11 this time around. And I said, everyone's getting so much better at the mechanics of the game. And it's the flawless blocks. It does change the game. It takes away hit advantage. It takes away buttons in neutral because you can't even press against these kids without the, without the threat of being flawless blocked. And that's game changing. We did not see it of this caliber at the last Evo. That's for sure. We did not. And Lou coming. I thought they were going to ride the mirror out here, but no. Another different character that I've seen from them in the grand finals. Even down to that whiff punish being one, two bicycle kick because you didn't want the launch. We just want it all being unbreakable. Mm -hmm. We're going to prioritize getting out of the bicycle kick first. I mean, this is the layer of which we have now obtained here. Reverse throw. Good situation for Liu Kang. What's coming up next? Delayed mid and more amplify. Give me that crushing blow, please. And that bicycle kick knockdown has been just money for Liu Kang since day one. He's get, he's, he get, gives you that weird deep jump kick that's so hard to deal with. What a start. Great. Oh. That's a punish. Too far away. Too far away to get the punish. That is unfortunate for Nicholas. Another dive kick with punish. Now has to try and make this one count. Spending the breakaway with this much of a life deficit. Trying to be a bit cheeky with that delayed yeah. launch. I mean, if it worked, you might have got a fatal blow, but it still wouldn't have killed. I mean, you had to be very pre predetermined, I think. With punish. I've been so impressed by everyone's ability to punish projectiles. Get that quick micro duck. Because it's hard to come from that crouch position into something and get it to come out properly with, 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 with the inputs in MK11. I mean, MK in general. Hello! Shows a lot of respect there. The launcher doesn't manage to get punished. Has to hold a little bit of minus frames here. Oh, there's a pickup though. That's going to do a lot of damage. <sighs> Those combos. So smooth, simple. Few hits, but chunky hits. Beefy forward, forward. Doo -doo. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ah! And that's the round. And, and learn from this, Nicolas. A match point. Winner of this round. Guaranteed I mean, top two? If Nicholas wins this round, it's Grand Finals Part 1. That's where we're going to enter. And that is going to turn Nicholas into a dangerous player with that safety net of a series afforded to be locked. There is the uppercut, which could begin it. No. Doesn't get the combo. Wait, hold on a second. Was Nicholas going for an American reset? <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to zoom. Oh, that forward one. I mean, surely that must have been a special move or something. But either way, it's starting uh -oh. to fall apart. Are we trying to go a bit too optimal? Too cute here, perhaps. And he's got that KB loaded. This is Apex Liu Kang now. He's got KBs in the final round. He's one of the biggest steamroll engines that exist in the game. And can Scorpion Prox get it a rolling? Nicholas, a couple of really crucial drops that have allowed Scorpion Prox to continue the onslaught of this last round in this next game and the way things are going might take it. We're gonna try and play it safe and get some guaranteed damage with a fatal blow because truth be told, however much damage this does, how much work is Nicholas gonna to have to do after? Fatal blow's ready for Lou, but at this point, who cares? That's not gonna do anything. Ooh. And if that hits at the max distance, get sent to an oblivion. Oh. Good movement. Dodge. Oh. Dodge. Oh. Oh. The Dip. Dip. Blow. Dive. Dodge. And it's not enough. Not and this is going at this distance once more. My question to you, at Command, do we see a character change here or a rematch? No, character change. Now, who do you fight versus Lou? Are we going to see a Lou mirror? Who knows? Ooh. So many questions, but no what clue. a turnaround. Zero clue. Absolutely wonderful turnaround there, at Command, and we're going into a game five. Liu Kang is locked in once more, but what will, character will does Nicholas pick? Will we Nicholas see the Nightwolf once more? Will we see the Raiden? 
Oh, yeah, honestly. Will we see the Rambo? I got no I'm, idea. I'm going to ask the questions that no one else was going to. Will we see Flag Baraka? <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's Spawn. <laughs> Ooh. It's the Killer Janok variation too, raising hell and charging mm. hell spawn. South America, I mean, those folks down they in South like America, their, they're onto they, something with they, this character. They like their safe lows down there. Safety and then damage if you're good at confirming, which they all clearly are. What a celebration this winner's finals has been so far. Only one more game stands between one of these two brothers, making it into grand finals winner's side with punish. And that's immediately, you know, you want to try and go for that amplified fireball. Couldn't quite with punish it last time because I was too far away. I'm spawned now. I ain't going to have that problem. That's right. Plus. There's a whole lot of fucking worry about barely spacing that. No. Put a scoop. That's the dunk. Put, put, it, put it in the NBA. Put him in multiverses. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. Unbreakable. Not that it really matters. There's no break available for Scorpion. Down two from downtown. Get me out of this corner. Whoa. Whoa. Baby. That was a pristine pickup in the mid, just absorbed the normal. That spot hit. What? what? Oh, oh my god. What just happened? We they saw a forbidden normal that Liu Kang players never use, and after that gives Scorpion Prox match point here versus Nicholas. It was a, it was a Jean Claude Van Damme roundhouse out of nowhere, but it's not enough to save him, Scorpion Prox. Trying to avenge the loss of Combo Breaker. Reestablish. Which twin? I love we'll that. Recognizing top. that the uh, Raising Hell connects, so there's actually no reason to get extra damage. You know, use it for safety. It's a waste otherwise, especially this early. No whip punish again. Oh, Whoa. wait a minute. What am I talking about? There was a whip punish immediately afterwards. Plus. Uh, no, no gap? Yep, gapless. Wake up, bicycle kick. Okay, now we're in uh, now we're in demon mode. Demon hours here at Evolution. Match point for both of the brothers here, Mr. Aquaman. They have played four. This is the fifth time that they have encountered each other <laughs> in bracket, all five times going the distance. And it's just gameplay that sensation. He just punished that projectile from Dink Corner Screen. Safety for raising hell and a lot of chip damage, if I say so myself. The cancel, trying to be cheeky. 3-4, no one home, happy to block it. Bible game, again, plus on block, but using the plus frames to bait a button. Mid-screen, I mean, an interesting game to play. Scorpion Prox, the life bleed, Ooh. interrupts and unjunk starts! They, they haven't been a huge factor of the match so far. Have those nunchucks, knows that for Especially to break out against your brother that probably knows every single weakness of it because it does have many. It's Scorpion Prop sitting pretty on top. All it got? takes is one bar of meter for anything here for Nicholas. Any Anything confirming into that Hellspawn with there being no breaker here. No, that's it! That is going to be it, surely! No breaker for you. And the flying kick. Interesting development here. And One of our two brothers finally cemented into the grand finals. The question is, will the other meet them? After the victory with Scorpion Prox, if if they're sitting on the right side of the stage, that I think they are, was a Scorpion Prox who after the victory was shaking his head. This is the one that won it. <sighs> Unbelievable. How high of a standard do you hold yourself? Yeah, how high of a standard You're in the grand like, finals at Eva. I mean, come on now. He's like, know. man. I'm getting sick and tired of my brother taking me to game five. Was he angry it wasn't a 3-1 victory? Who knows? Who knows what's going on between those two? They're, they're thinking things that we can't comprehend, right? So the tournament develops. It's going to be Scorpion Prox making it into grand finals. Winner's side. Nicholas waiting in losers finals. The question is, who is going to join him as Rewind is about to face off against Foxy Grandpa? Dude, this is big. Oh, this if? is huge. Who, who is going to be the final defender? We spent... All right, here's the thing, right, Ackerman. Right. We've both been in the scene for a long time. There was an EU versus NA, you know, thing forever. 5v5 that happened at a certain period that things went a certain way. Is that the one you're talking about? Well, I mean, I'm not going to lie. That's the same trip that Foxy Grandpa had a diabetic fit and we didn't get a play. <laughs> so I'd rather not talk about that when, uh, you know, because 2015 was a little bit better. Cabal. <laughs> I, I, I did it right, though. Uh, my point is that we we spent years being like, I hate you. No, I hate you. In love, you know, love you, but I hate you. You know what I mean? That rivalry, that rivalry yeah. that always exists. 
And now, we're having to combine forces. We're, we're, having, we're, we're combining forces. One, only one person, out of either Foxy or Rewind, is going to be able to go against the brothers. Yes. As, as the now, last hope for us. A lot of us talked about it at the stage during the last break. We feel that of the two remaining, we feel like Foxy, I feel like, might be on paper, when we get into this conversation further, the one to have possibly the best chance against the twins because of the very unique play style of is if there is something left in this tournament for the twins to be unprepared for i feel i feel like it's foxy's play style well against the likes of rewind i'm curious about the, we, we always have to talk no. about these character choice because it, it, it can spell so much about the set rewind's also been a game away multiple times he's right there but Foxy yesterday in particular was so close to having a convincing victory, you know, but before things got turned around the way they did, this is where we, we kind of have to think. I mean, look, clearly made the best man win. Whoever oh. wins this is going to be the most deserving to take the shot. But I feel like every, well, every single one of us is watching this like, actually, realistically, who has the best shot against these yeah. two brothers? And Foxy was up 2-0 with the Robocop, made the switch to sub, wrote it, wrote it out fell in that match if he can get through will he learn from that one and maybe just stick it out with big murph but hey big murph a, has been a, very a, good to foxy <laughs> this weekend very good that he has what's the choice going to be here against rewind it's going to be a mountain to climb before he even gets to the everest that is battling for the championship in the next round in the top three guys this is four Top three at Evo, loser getting fourth. What are the picks gonna be? Here we go. Big Murph and Lou came from Rewind and he's got some success here and there across the years with this character. The Celtic Throwdown run is infamous of Rewinds with this character. One of the absolute best performances of Rewind's entire career. Yes. And now we might be coming full circle as it's gonna be Evo Rewind. There is a chance to become a returning Evo champion once more. This was, this was the big win that Rewind got, was with this character. Can you do it again? Against Liu Kang with the Robocop. I guess this is where we get a little bit interested because pure fundamentals on the side of Liu Kang and Robocop having all the tools in the world to keep you at arm's reach. And how is Rewind going to capitalize on every situation? Right now, I mean, look, it's a risk worth taking because this Robocop variation doesn't do loads of damage. And we've only just started, so let's try and put the thought early that I'm going to fly and kick. Absolutely. I like that too. Try to set the tone. I like that everyone's been bringing the similar tools to fight Robocop with. They're also bringing a low projectile. They know if you can't contest that low, that low auto nine, it's a problem. Foxy having a really good life lead at the very beginning. The stance to maybe give a little bit of extra opportunities here for Rewind, but no one home just yet. Down Ooh. one, gives him a turn. So much damage on those spikes. Those anti-crime spikes, man, they don't tickle. Happy to hold the throw. That's right. Let's roll away. Woo! Lovely. Looks like that caught a button, and speaking of catching something to 4-4. Four Foxy just not blocking there, gives Rewind. Huge jump. <laughs> Try to bait something with the empty jump. I like that too. Sorry, the empty short up. Pick up. No! That's the Yoshi Row. With that. the slight damage buff on there, with the flame fist, we'll see if this closes out against Big Murph with the 1100 Super Soaker health bar. Will he survive? That's the question. Oh Robocop! Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! Robocop steals oh. that one away! One HP and a dream! Come quietly or there will be trouble. Silent. I'd say it's silence to solve, but the crowd's gone wild. The crowd very much enjoyed that one. It was almost a disaster for Foxy. I mean, whiffs the 1-2-1 one, one and gets whiff punished by the fatal blow and then survives with quite literally 1% left in the tank. And then we're just walking out the corner. Get me out of here. Come on That's now. That's one of the most disrespectful grabs in history. And then the whole sequence right there by Foxy. Rewind just lost like 200 health after getting sent full screen because of the strip and the zoning. Perfectly executed by Foxy. Rewind makes that read again. Just go for the flying kick, but this time it worked out. At a much more critical moment, and hang on a minute, here comes more of the bicycle kick. Now, a great opportunity now for Rewind to take this. And that's it. Doesn't need to spend anything, doesn't need to do anything flashy, but what we are gonna do is build towards those bicycle kicks. 
in the final round to start us off here. Big challenge, the Liu Kang special, just putting out that one, two, four. The speed, the name of the game for the Earth Realmian hero, and he's going to town. Rewind feeling the momentum. Ooh. Gets the cash out. He's about to give Foxy a fatal blow, and is it even going to matter? He stood, time to guess again. Flame Fist is on, working at a flawless. Isn't enough with the dead? No, stays alive because of the big health, and a flawless victory for Rewind is the response. That was very much just one of those cases of everything that could work is going to work perfectly. Rewind Ooh. just having the game sense, and that's one thing that makes him so scary is if it's a mix-up that can be like a grab or a button or a stagger, he's just got that peace of mind where he's almost always bang on the money. And it is going to prompt now a character change. Foxy. I can tell you from experience, it's aggravating to fight against. <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> aggravating to just see what he's capable of, right? On a consistent basis. Well, it looks like we're going to be going in for a sub-zero pick Ooh. instead. A drastically different matchup, but one that is going to require Foxy to take considerably more risks than he takes with Robocop. That Robocop matchup was so close, but at the end of the day, the second Liu Kang closes in that gap, it's going to be a little bit trickier to deal with. And now the sub. Is it time to just mix? Yeah, because... That's what, that's what Foxy picks Sub-Zero for, is to rob. It's the complete opposite of what he just threw at his opponent. He went all the way up the right sleeve and pulled out the Robocop in the zoning. Now he's going all the way up the left sleeve. I take that back. He's actually brought the more zoning-oriented Sub-Zero. It's always been how he plays. The Axe gives him a little bit more neutral control. The Frigid Storm it's is one sub I know that uses that move. But it's Rising Ice, my friend. The Rising Ice is where it really starts to party. Because it gives you the same threat of your overhead leading to a launcher, but for less cost than the two bars that the Deep Freeze uh, does give you, but you lose the zoning option, but you're right, that axe is so underutilized, in my opinion. That's now a full combo. Foxy, gonna be able to get a respectable amount of damage here on top of getting towards the amplified slide. Love to see it. Ooh. Making it over knees. One of the biggest projectiles in the game. The Icicle Explosion, I forgot what it's called. Frigid Storm, I believe. <laughs> Icicle Explosion. I shouldn't name stuff. <laughs> Big punch, Whoa. a Goro move. <laughs> a Goro move. Big normal. <laughs> sure hops, the down one to challenge. Ooh, Ooh. that delay! Whoa. That's it! No need to overcomplicate. We'll just take the yeah. fatal blow and we'll take that first round, but it seems like a bit of an uncomfortable round, Acroman. From both. Yeah. Foxy, having a hard time getting settled, rewind. Going to be unsettled with the fact that Sub Zero is on the screen, and woo wee! I like what I just saw to get started. With punish, that's going to be fantastic for Rewind. The counter hit into good damage, forcing the breakaway too. Best of everything, really, in this round. Foxy not being able to make the right call out on the grabs, the staggers, the mids in this case. Flame on! Oh, the challenges! Foxy's getting bold. Little Fortress favorite. Let's get the corner. Ops, not to, not to go for the pressure there, had some opportunity to get a couple four dashes in, but uses it for that Arctic Blast that we haven't seen be a factor, but I like that he's still going for it. He uses it mostly just to kind of stabilize, and from range it creates a really weird... Oh, oh my, what on earth was that? That was so unconventional that it worked. Very much. <laughs> because that was not a safe thing to do. No, instant air axe can actually be slightly plus, which is a very scary thing to deal with, KB. Ooh. All she wrote in Foxy, the aggression, the complete 180 in play style. That's the mark of a great player and a champion, is someone that can play every kind of aspect of the game at, at, at the highest level. Another one, and we're going to start off strong by going in for one of our slides. The KBs to count too you far away. Really hate to see that. <laughs> You've gotten a whiff. What on earth? That was good that Rewind didn't overcommit. One more normal, and that was about to be with Punish City. Population one. Could have been there alone at the bar. Now that buff. Ooh, I, I thought the flying kick was coming. Yo, the short hop to get over the axe, that's sick. That's a punish though, the dash in just to make it so way too close. There's a challenge back to back. Rewind starting to catch sight of what was catching him in the previous match. Those back to back one two is not gonna work anymore. Goes for it two times in a row now. Look at something, anything in Foxy. If he gets hit, it's all really guaranteed at that point. So is this. 
for 214. Because this variation of Liu Kang, it gives that 1-2-3 uh, command grab that's just kind of guaranteed on hit. Hard to deal with, because that 1-1-3 one, one, is just a present of itself. The jump works out as Foxy whips the forward two. And Rewind finds another round on the board. Forward two was so likely that Rewind was going to do everything in his power to just avoid being in its range. Hence all the jumps and the mobility that we were seeing there. I mean, it was the right choice to make. Why even put yourself in that situation as Foxy now? The back-to-back -back one two works again. Denial there, not of the damage, but of the KB. You do not want to give Sub-Zero that slide crushing blow ready to go. Whips it, the footsies were rewind, so good. That stand one into the slight walk back got everything right there. Foxy pressing. It's huge. He's got the knockdown. This is big. Time to guess. And he guesses right. Just rewind. Cash is out for 354. Uh-oh. Life alert for Foxy Grandpa. Doesn't fall for the stagger to stand one. Rewind's mixed up a couple things off of it. And that was just a bullying in the corner. A couple of strong rounds from Rewind to possibly gain some momentum with the 2-1 lead here. Sub-Zero kind of working, kind of not. I feel like Rewind's being way too active, way too mobile for the Sub-Zero style to kind of work Wait, on Foxy, him. Wait, sorry, did I just get people mixed up? I don't I know, mate, it's already gone. <laughs> I lost my brain four matches ago. <laughs> but I'm wondering, oh, it is going to be the Katana. Now, Katana has always been one of Foxy's most common characters, but not necessarily in the competitive space. I'm wondering how it's going to fare here because of just how dominant Rewind is looking with this Liu Kang. He's betting his tournament life on this. I mean, I said the Sub-Zero wasn't really working because it works if someone's like really grounded, but Rewind's just all over the place. And he knows if I'm, if I'm moving all over around, he's not gonna be able to get these mix-ups on me. Katana, I think she's gonna be a little bit better at shutting that down. Yes, very oh, that was so good. Rewind, how did you know? I mean, that's oh. the way to get started. Everything is working for Rewind so far, Aquaman. The name of the game against this variation of Katana, I feel like, is gonna be trying to control the pace a little bit more. Um, if he's able to stay on top of her, don't let her get that blood stance going. That's what it's that's what it's all about here. But if she can get going, that set play can really take a health bar. Now wake up one, two, three. Oh, oh no. commits. Foxy can't quite get the punish though, and I think he's trying to press afterwards. That was no punish. But this Liu Kang has been a bit hard for Foxy to kind of deal with here. Did not believe that that was going to hit, so already committed into the van. But the neutral duck and the punish, rewind. He's on another level right now. That was crisp. Watching that jump and float over him, that's so hard to do because on paper, I'm looking at that, I think I'm getting clipped to the face. And blocking right there would change the game for someone like me in that situation. So the fact that he knows, and these top players do, how to get those jumpings to whiff by staying crouched, staying low. They could also be Limbo champions. There's more of the side pressure to just continue. Foxy with Woo! punish. Here we go. And again, just in case you try and break, there's the butt barge, the square wave. With punish, but not quite. There's the pickup though. Rewind, clean stuff. Ready for it. And now welcome back to the corners where Rewind bullied him in the last one. They can keep him here. Ooh. Tried the short hop, and it almost anti-aired. Short hops do have a unique way about them to anti-air. Uh, well, in most cases, we saw Spawn's anti-air half-screen earlier. Now, as long as Liu Kang has that fatal blow. Oh, dear, that was almost a whip punish. Woo! Not quite, though. How many short hops are we gonna see go overneath these, these normals and specials? This is what I mean, Rewind is just playing so slippery, but it so often seems to be the right thing to do that it just, it's gotta be so stressful to fight. And Foxy gets clipped here, he knows that he's in big trouble. And that's why he's the plus won. frame for Rewind, he's happy to just sit and block. 10 seconds left. If Foxy With gets punish. the oh, no. The pressure he just survived right there. The he one thing immaculate. he didn't want to eat was a fatal blow. So he was happy to get grabbed if it meant, you know, not getting killed out of the round. Still match point for Rewind though, and this is a great start. That's one of the easiest situations to get grabbed to death on and Foxy standing his ground. Drops the combo, that would've been huge. Could've seen the KB or at least a fish for it as Rewind didn't sh show the breakaway. I'm actually gonna very much go into the not playing loads of offline Katana in the lead up to Evo. You know, that those few frames of delay, though, in those kind of combos, they'll make a huge difference. Now Foxy, a good life lead, but with the likes of Liu Kang, will easily turn away. There's the command grab, lovely stuff there from Rewind. Love that in a slight negativity too. Let's keep your opponent on your toes. Use those grabs wisely, guys, if they're blocking too much. Make that check happen, Fox. He's trying to make a comeback happen here. Tossing these fans in there, super effective. Wow, the balls to just dash up and command grab there. 
That jump in was really risky from Foxy. And now Down four fan. He can take this now. We're in the same situation as the last game. And it's oh the throw. Oh my lord. If you're, look at, Rewind saying if you're wrong there, you lose. And Foxy that was, was that right. Smile. Foxy was somehow right. Are we rematching? Yes, we will. It's Katana and Liu Kang. Which character's making it through? Foxy didn't quite pick that one up. Can't believe we're sitting here once more in the energy that we have felt here at EVO in another game five in finals. Now Foxy not actually using that Molina dive kick to press the advantage, just getting the damage and then backing up, disengaging the situation. Dash and grab, again, rewind. Starting to catch sight. I mean, you're blocking a lot. I mean, are you going to get hit by these? Ooh, with the grab from ages away. And he still pushes out the stand one, the shortest one possible. And there's another one. Woo! That's what Foxy needed, though. And uh, hey, if anything, if, if it was a consolidation since you have no bar, at least he's out of the corner. Take, take a positive for what it is. Neutral's been reset here mid screen. It's match point for Rewind. It was going to be very difficult to win that round. Foxy had to prioritize getting back into the center of the screen, and that was the choice he made. Now, is that going to be enough, perhaps, to bring him into a match point situation, or is this where things end for Foxy? Ooh. And Rewind moving on. I think either way, this has been such a good set. I'm happy with either result, but I'd love nothing more than to see it go to a final round. But Rewind gets the bicycle kick, and the pressure begins. He's really turning up the heat here. Bold presses from Foxy on the defensive side of things. Back one really slow there on the stagger. Liu Kang's generally minus one, minus two on every stagger the man possesses. And Foxy's done a good job in these clutch moments of being right defensively against all of those situations. And Rewind holding onto the breaker. Knows that if I arm, if he armor breaks me here, I'm in a really bad situation. It's just not worth it. So does the right thing and just holds the combo damage. That whip was frightening. It was. But Rewind not ready for it. Probably hasn't even seen that string whiff before. These guys are really slowed down. That trade favors Foxy, at least for now. But now Fatal Blow is ready to go. Rewind just needs one good hit into Fatal Blow, and it will be moving on to top three. Woo! Like it's I said earlier, these are these moments that you can get thrown to death. It's, I'm shocked you haven't seen more come from Rewind in these comeback attempts where Foxy Grandpa Not has again! just frozen up defensively and reversal thrown. That was exactly how the last game ended. And we see the exact same situation. Foxy once more prioritizing the center of the screen. Just stay away from the corner. That's where Rewind gets a better situation. And Rewind having to chase down this defensive brick wall. Nice pickup, but the breakaway. No bicycle kick for you, my friend. Ooh, didn't get right. Wow. Said, I, I can't believe Rewind was ready for that. Thought it was going to be a punish. Foxy does no! both of them. Both of them slipping in a final round. Two mistakes from both. They're both human. But there it is. He was looking for the bicycle kick and he finds it. Wake up, jump. Rewind must have fumbled a flawless block there or something. Foxy did that jump kick so early that he just put a different timing on there that Rewind is not used to. Wow. Foxy now the lead. Knows that he might need to go for something big here because now he's got Fatal. That trade, good for Foxy, but maybe not. Now the Fatal Blow's been locked in. Cannot get hit by this at all. And he gets the jump in. That should very well be the end of the game. And Rewind was looking for that the whole time. That's got to be it. The That's got to be going it. going wild. Oh, that's enough. The rewind. lone American left in the bracket stays alive. It's going to be Rewind versus the Twins for EVO 2022. The magic jump in to end all jump ins right there. But he, he had some clutch max distance jump threes that just when Liu Kang does his jump, his legs like doing like a flick of like a like an angle like that, and he's hitting max distance with it. It's incredible that he was able to thread the needle through the amplified uh, fan there. But this does create to us a rather interesting situation then. Rewind, a run back begins again. And for many viewers, Rewind, the kind of last hope to prevent yes. a twin grand final. However, if it is a twin grand final, that is well earned. And like I said, the story simply continues. Where if there's any doubters left, I mean, you, you can't doubt it. You can't even doubt it now. Let's look at it now. Nicholas versus Rewind. However, earlier on, Rewind had to fight Scorpion Prop. So Rewind's, we've gone from one brother to another. I think Rewind's n never had to fight Nicholas. I think it was Scorpion Prox at Combo Breaker. 
only two sets remain here at Aquaman. And we're going to get so much more information as this tournament is just about to hit its home stretch here for Mortal Kombat. We're going to go for a break. And when we come back, MK11 finishes here at EVO 2022. See you in a bit. Welcome back, everyone. You're watching the final moments of Mortal Kombat 11 here at EVO 2022. Two series are left to go. Only three players out of about 470 remain. Let's take a look at the bracket and we'll have a look at those players. Rewind versus Nicholas is going to be our loser's final. Whoever wins that meets Scorpion Prox in the grand finals of EVO 2022. The last offline major event for this game was Combo Breaker just a couple of months ago. And Not it forgetting was. forgetting CEO, my friend. Oh, you're right. I, I do keep it. <laughs> but. <laughs> it was a great tournament, too. But at Combo Breaker, it was this exact situation in top three. A little different in that he had to fight Scorpion Prox in the Losers Finals, if I'm not mistaken. But it was Rewind versus the Twins. And it was that infamous moment where Grand Finals was set that everyone was like, wow, our last remaining threat has been eliminated. America finds themselves in the same exact position, but with, oh, I don't know, the Fighting Game World Champion on the line. Well, right now we're going to do the button check as we always expect. I highly doubt we're going to be seeing this match up here, but I guess always expect the unexpected. However, I feel like there's going to be a lot of crowd bias here. They're going to want to see Rewind push this one forward. But at the same time, there's going to be countless fans at home watching this live from South America that are going to be cheering on both of the twins, you know, Scorpion Prox and Nicholas, because what a celebration this year has been for upcoming young generation talent. Yes, it has. All of these, all these young teens finally working their way towards the offline community or, or a lot of these guys that have only grinded in the online um, realm of finally making their way to the offline community where guys, we've said it time and time again, we're gonna keep saying it, here offline, all of that drama and toxicity of online and social media, it's gone. Here it's just everyone having a great time. The energy's been indescribable. It's friends and fans. Every time you come to an offline event like this, you're just reminded that, that all of that weird sort of negative that toxicity, there, all of the negative toxicity that exists, I mean, I don't even think we need to bring light to it. It doesn't exist in the offline space here. I mean, maybe it does, but I guess people are people. For Evo, everyone's having a great time. The crowd's loving it, we're loving it, the players are loving it. Hopefully you lovely people at home are enjoying the show yeah. too, but it has been a wholesome few days. Wonderful to see everyone again and just, you know, be reminded we're all mates, right? We've all got this same mutual passion for Mortal Kombat fighting games in general we wouldn't be at evo otherwise and let's now jump in to our losers finals different brother same matchup he's fighting the same person essentially down to the core down to the dna but <laughs> it'll be nicolas able to pick up where his brother left off against rewinds Cordal, and this is dark souls boss Cordal that we're seeing from rewind he's trying to simply out damage these twins right now. Right now, can he even press a button? Rewind. The escape failed start. with Nicholas going for the smarter throw direction, throwing them out of the corner, because really you don't need the corner situation in this situation, right? Because you've got so much life, you only need to get one significant hit, really. Let's just get the escape failed, which no doubt will help out in the next round. Which most certainly will. We know how confident Rewind is with a bar and hello, wave dash grab. When you're at four or two range, if you're afraid of 4-2 and looking for 4-2, Wave Dash, Wave Dash Grab might be free. <laughs> looking for a trip guard on that back one. Let's it rock, and Stop there it. is the flawless block. God. Stop it. If you do anything faster, slower than 14 frames, these guys are flawless blocking it, apparently. Heck no, down two is like nine frames, 10 frames. They're just ridiculous. I do like this idea though with Rewind. Let's just go in with a character that's a bit beefier than most, has oh, really yeah. good damage, and has mix-ups that I can quite literally, regardless of skill level, I'll just throw these command grab mix-ups on you. You're going to get stand for this. 
Oh, sorry, just totally. 100% safe. Like, even that forward two there after the second totem, that was a scary mix up because, you know, raw command grab, that was going to do tons he's, of damage. He's dead. Amplified, looks like he doesn't have that meter. I would praise the sun just with the health lead, but that's where, that, that's where I would have died. <laughs> <laughs> might got a, you might got a Twitch clip, though, or something. <laughs> oh, you sure. know. Someone for the old Twitter analytics. And he uh, doesn't get it though. Looks for the conversion. No one home. I died going for a god rain in MTX top four. I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, you know, I'm a cold player. They can throw that low 300 damage. Still had it. Locked and loaded. Two totems. Nico was barely whiffing that jump too. And one fight spark with 340, no. I think. Hello. Oh! My word. Is he gonna stack? Nope. <laughs> Cabal broke himself on that one. Oh, the down two's already been spent. And that's it. That has to be. Bang! So much damage, and the crowd on after one slam. game. On the slam of the sword, the crowd erupted. As they know what's on the line here, they know the story. If Rewind loses, the first time ever. In history, USA will lose any other round title, ladies and gentlemen. That's a monumental moment, both for the country that's going to be conceding it, and for, it, world. Yeah. And for, for it. South America, who's going to be able to really take that mantle. It's like I said, there's, there's so many mixed emotions here, because I'm going to be happy regardless of outcome. We can talk about this later down the line, because we have a match in front of us. 1-0 for Rewind, where this Kotal was looking a little bit more, purely because I mean, look, we've had more totems, we've had more damage it's and opportunities. Ow. is what this Kotal has been. And Rewind, Remy thought he made it out of the corner, Nico lost it, a flash of a Cabal. Oh. Wow, he's learning from earlier, not over committing when he sees how high people are getting on the 4-2. It's not gonna matter. It's a closeout by Nicolas. He's back in the boys. He's gonna sharpen the blade? No. Just point and call him out to say, you are next. Ooh. Ah, there's the 1-1-1, one, one, one. that's going to be a juicy a double jump combo. Nicolas, the knockdown. Woo. The jump back's going to be clean and even more damage piling on Rewind now with basically just a third left. Anna, oh, you're dead. You're so dead. Oh. Only has, yeah, zero bar. But this is a health deficit that he would need three totems and a dream to make that comeback happen. Would have had to start it with at least a command grab, get some kind of knockdown in the corner, and then just start mixing your way into a comeback. Rewind not even given the opportunity here. As Nicolas is looking uh, crispy. Restart match. One apiece. For oh, that. Oh. I'm at a loss of words because the sword almost got him that would have KB'd in the other way around would have been 400 damage. Yes, indeed, but I feel like we were almost frames off from seeing that. The frame one break and the jump to read the command grab. Every decision Nicholas is making has been on the money. And, and here comes even more of it. That's what we talk about with Kotal Khan. Every command grab is a risk when you're fighting characters that can pump out what Cabal's able to do. But then on the flip side, look at this. Oh! He did it to this side. You can't even do anything about it. It's guaranteed right there, Ketchup. Nicholas is going to sit there and take that one. Ooh. I was a little bit nervous as to what was going to happen. Maybe a command grab there, but no jumping to be had. Minus frames, but it's barely minus that you could kind of set up for a flawless block. So good thing that didn't bite. Ooh. Only the forward two hit, so there's no confirm here. The jump back's good, and Nicholas gets another round on the board. Second time he's clutched out a round in those moments with a really good read against. That's a Cold Con read. Jump back out of those ranges of the really big normals that are going to whip forever. Cold Con whips when he presses. Now the discus, I haven't seen much of that. There's a flawless block again. How he's been so surgical, I do not know. But the high jump in, that's Command Grab City and a damage buff with plenty more that came from. There's a totem, there's two totems, there's three! These triple stacks, fully loaded! Oh, oh my goodness! 418 damage, that's a slice to the jaw! And Rewind's coming back to life. With Punish into another KB, that is the round. No, he drops in! Rewind, no! A missed opportunity and a chance for Nicholas to bring this one back. 
Oh, 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 oh. my lord, Aquaman, this is a stressful series. I'm not gonna lie, a sweat just went down my forehead because he he just held up right there and it'd be in the right region. What a match. We are going totems all day, every day in rewind situation now. The 1-1 one, one stagger, back-to-back -back poke, and oh, that's gonna hurt. Aquaman, how much damage? You know, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? That, that's a fair statement. Dash in, come on, grab. No meter for Amplify, but he's going to get Oki anyway. Are we going to use a totem? Yes. Which resets the time completely. If you guys don't know, back to zero. You guys have quite some time to get another one, but he gets shimmy by the 4 2. Hesitated. A Very moment great. of hesitation is going to give Nicholas a full combo here. 34 plus frames. In this case, just a forward two. Nicholas sitting there, making the good read to sit and respect it. The jump two, really good. The down one to steal Woo! the turn. A conversion and no break. Nicholas knows that's way too risky. And what? Yeah. Oh, oh my god! My god! Not enough for the kill! But one of the greatest pickups I've ever seen in my life! Oh my goodness! I did not even know Kotal Khan could pick up from a forward one. Like that. In that way, Rewinds now, 2-1 up on Nicholas, and you can feel the energy, it's in the air. It's electric, this crowd. They wanna see North America in these finals. And the flawless blocks, fantastic, rewind! So much damage on Nicholas already in this first round here for potentially the final game. No breaker available either, and so much more damage to come. And the ball's to put another totem. Nicholas really feeling the pressure. Rewind every totem he gets on the screen. Nicholas, it can die. Now, if he gets two up, and he grounded hit, he has baited out those air to air so well. He has sucked Nicholas from Cabal in here. Oh, but he goes into the forward two. A jump back from Nicholas is going to do it. This won't kill, but the next touch will. The big damage and the up three. Going with the plus, or sorry, the safe wake up of Kotal Khan's the up three, one of the best. We did not talked about enough. Kotal Khan's wake up game, both two of the best in this game. What the wave wave into command grab three totems. Oh. And oh. I'm sure you can hear this crowd. The down two, everything is working. So much damage, chopping him for another 452. One more, rewind, looking to create a highlight reel. There's the chance. America's feeling it. Nicolas needing a miracle. Rewind grabbing air as I am on commentary to try to close this out. The stagger game. The scary. That's the last breakaway Nicholas is going to get in this round. The up three for the safety. A confirm. A clean confirm from Nicholas. The fatal blow as well. Right. Stabilize. Calm down. A split second of room to move and figure out what we're going to do here because rewind is one hit away. One hit away with Kotal. What's the decision going to be? Is rewind going to risk a wake up? No, but still going to risk And on reaction is going to keep the United States alive. Antia as clean as they come. Becoming only the second player to beat a twin offline. And you can see how much this means to the people in the crowd. There's a lot of people here that are believing in Rewind. The story of... This crowd has been honestly chomping at the bit to do a USA chant all year. Oh yeah, they've been waiting. Because... All year! Sorry, all, folks. All, all millennia. Sorry, folks, but <laughs> you, you didn't have the chance to do it until right now. So, you know what? Wow. Normally, as someone who finds that, like, really obnoxious, I'll allow it today. I'll allow it. It's obnoxious. You need a better chant, man. I mean, you're right. It's, Europe's got all these lovely chants, these cool chants, and then the USA's just boring, isn't it? <laughs> you do better than that. Come on. There's more of you than me. Even the Australians have the oi, 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 which is pretty cool. Reminds me of versus fighting with a uh, uh, dead shot. Every time he would do the rifle, the UK crowd would go, oi, 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 oi. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the most exciting dead shot ever, which is, I uh, can't believe I'm saying that. But now, I tell you what, folks, after this brief, brief little interval right here, the grand finals of EVO is about to begin. Now, I gotta say, on the off chance that people at home Maybe this is your first time watching it, whatever. 
double yeah, elimination grand finals. I got to say, Ackerman, while we set up, tell the people at home what double elim means. What does Rewind have to do to win this tournament? And so, what does Scorpion Prox have to do? Especially if you're a first time watcher, you're looking at this tournament, you're like, what even is this? Everyone signs up, they play in a bracket format, which is you play someone else, then you advance to the next round. Everyone that signs up has two lives. The entire tournament, you have two lives. You can lose once, and you're still in. You go to loser's bracket. Here in Grand Finals, Scorpion Prox is coming in on the winner's side. He hasn't lost yet, which means he still has two lives to his name. Rewind has taken an L. He's coming from the loser's bracket. Will need to beat Nikolas twice. He technically still has to send Nikolas, or sorry, Scorpion Prox. I'm getting mixed. They're, to be they're fair, they are, as, as a twin, they're twins, I get I it. But the point is, Rewind has to win two best of fives. Yes, has to send Scorpion Prox two losers, and then try to win this. The crowd's going wild right now. They're panning across. I can see on another camera, they are ready for this one. This is the twin, though, that Rewind has a now 0-2 record against. This is going to be the biggest test, and it's the same exact matchup. Scorpion Prox, I think, is going to be playing with a chip that we've never seen before. This is new territory for us all. He, has, he, he actually gets to try to avenge his brother. We've never seen that situation. The unwritten rule of twins playing in tournament is that the other will always try and secure vengeance. And That's that right. is a chance now. But Rewind, you want to look at momentum? You're, you're looking at it now. Rewind could not be more apt up for this. <laughs> and this character, if he has momentum, is the most damaging character in this game. Like. He, he's going to require the least amount of reads to take this, and I like that in a matchup against Cabal. You, because what you're trying to do is you're trying to punch Cabal Ooh. in the chest so hard that it knocks the wind out of him. That's what it's like to fight this one. A full combo that was just left on the dinner plate there. Scorpion Ooh. Prox had something, but just didn't take it. There's a totem, and now things are going to go. Micro Duck! Oh my good lord! Rewind's going to take the first round here for Grand Finals. Ooh, just hammering away on that sword. Getting that extra damage in there. Rewind off to a wonderful start as he takes the first round. He's gotten more and more comfortable with this Kotal too, and he's getting more and more comfortable doing more than one totem. He was only doing one totem against Prox the first uh, meeting. That was a little bit greedy with that third one, though. It did allow that jump in. Oh my Ooh. god, this retrocade is causing an unreasonable amount of mobility <laughs> here for Scorpion Prox. Instant jump in, though. Wait a minute. Good knockdown here. <laughs> What a call out from Scorpion Prox to say you're gonna do one of your slower buttons there. That's what that tells me, and he's got a solid round to tie us up. One round Ooh. apiece, but Rewind resets this bracket. We have a lot of Mortal Kombat 11 to play just to finish things up there. Escape failed. And Went. it was Rewind pulling a little bit of a Foxy or just wave dashing in general. Who's underneath these jump This is awesome. Minus frames, a down one, just making the call out there. A down one of his own, now Rewind returning the favor. Shout out to the Subway. Can we get a second one? There it is. Are we going to level three? We're at level three! Big damage on the board. Oh. That would have killed. They wouldn't have, but hey. <laughs> yeah, may as well have done. In our hearts it did. But Scorpion Prox playing hyper defensive, which I really like. The second you see all these totems, does not give the opportunity. Oh, but now there's one. Look at that. Just juicy. Ooh. Like the mentality behind that gets a big air there. Rewind was much more successful against Nikolas on the air control than he was against Prox prior. Oh, the call out! Oh no! No, that's a guaranteed armor break! But he's still gonna pick it up! Rewind dropped it and then survives, and he's up, and the crowd is backing up Rewind right now. They're coming to life. We're going the straight into another game here. Lively crowd at EVO for Mortal Kombat. Oh, no! Let's go! That certainly doesn't tickle 350. This doesn't tickle either. Now, Nothing this character worry, does right? is going to tickle. Here's my worry. Scorpion Prox and Nicholas both together. They've had unbelievable composure in tournament this year, especially for players that are so young. This is Ooh. where... Every
everything becomes so much more stressful for you. Is this oh. where Rewind's experience Mr. Bush. is going to bring him over? Oh. You know, he's able to fight. He just got it. What? That was an old man K3 <laughs> Nomad dash right there. That was from Mighty Claws, wasn't it? The pressure was just a 4 2 2. Throws ready, but wow! That jump kick was so early. Did it for the restand? No. We still a raw pit. Oh, sometimes Three. you have to simply stop what you're saying and recognize that something was so good that's not even worth saying something over. The parry. The parry into even more damage still, but there's a counter hit. No need to spend the crushing blow because who cares? Oh. That was definitely a combo drop there from Scorpion Prox, and this is what I'm talking about. I think there's an element of nerves at play, and this is purely Ooh. just a lack of experience on this stage. But over the course of this series, is Scorpion Prox going to become more comfortable, or is Rewind going to keep it going? One thing to talk about that we haven't gotten an opportunity to is will we see maybe a potential counterpick? Uh-oh! Keeps the side. Keeps that's the what, side switch. That's one thing that we don't know the Twins for an awful amount. Is there, are they going to be able to counterpick in, 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 a, in situations like this? Are they going to be in a deficit? These we're, we're in uncharted territory in a jump kick. Wow. There in time, if, if he would have done a different normal right there, forward one, just advance him too far forward. It is a great anti-air normal. If he did stand one, it would have been uh, distance wise good enough for the anti-air. Still, I, I like the decision by rewind. And I've loved that he's been doing pokes on hit into forward two. That's something I notice a lot of other Coral Cons do. It gets people trying to jump late uh -oh. or like re grabs. It gets like that 4 2 covers an awful lot for not jailing. Now, once again, Rewind being a little bit greedy with the totems. That third one costing a bit too much, 400 damage. You, you just defined a Coral Con player. We were born greedy, man. We <laughs> go for God Ray at 1%. We don't care. Yeah, I know. Your character got buffed to hell and back and you still wanted more. Anyway, facts. <laughs> the 1 2 2. Ooh, a lovely defensive downfall there from Scorpion, and hang on a minute, this could very well be it. Makes the call out into the command grab, and there we go. Right. All right, we're the, back to even. And there was a good time there where command grab's success rate was, what, he had six or seven in a row. Finally, Prox making one, and puts him on the board. And He's two away from game. this tournament being over. We're talking about the potential journey here of Rewind, but you're absolutely bang on the money. Having the winner's bracket advantage, not losing a series means that Scorpion, I mean, this is, a, this is a three out of five you need to win, that's it. So this could be either over very quickly indeed, or Rewind is gonna take this a lot longer. And those wave wow. dashes forward have gotten him out of some of the advancement of Cabal. I've seen three go underneath and he was just what? ready. What a call by Rewind, stood his ground with the block. Thought the breakaway was going to come, and that's another thing you can do to kind of safely cover the breakaway when it's not a guaranteed oh, that's it. setup. That's the round. GG. Scoop. Go. Oh. Back to the corner. Disgusting. Someone's four of them. Where, where's, where's Quad Totem at? God, I thought. In hell where it belongs. <laughs> it's there to air. Counter hit again. There we go again. 400 damage. Read him and weep, it, Scorpion Prox. You know, I feel like he just has not had a chance to play this game this match. Call me crazy, but it will never get old to me watching Kotal Khan delete a health bar. Wow! Here's some more. Boom! My man, Rewind just believed in that one. I mean, flawless block, who cares? Look at my life lead. I wouldn't be surprised if we see some wild, like, just wave dash grab, wave dash down two type of. That he was, tried to praise the sun. That was genuinely. I saw the summoning. That was like a classic is, MK on the gut right there. Is he gonna praise the sun? Oh! Jump back one. The Sistine Chapel. I, David reaching out to God himself. It makes me so sad that I know what you mean. Because that was MKX as well. It was. We've been doing it since the dawn of time. Wake up up three. The neutral jumps fantastic. Though Scorpion Prox is gonna get a significant opening. Something that really did not exist in the last match. Now here we are, folks. A development. Rewind wins this game. We reset. We go into another Ooh. best of five. And then finally, it's completely even. Another wake up. Shut down there. The floor is blocked. Oh, get back down here. Poor old Cole Khan. His legs are too big. And there he is. One of the... He's a character that struggles to jump over projectiles because he's got such a big hurtbox down there. But he's got size 17 feet, so what are you going to do? 
Push back now from the discus. Also, this does, especially if he gets three totem stuff, an unknown secret as Scorpion Prox gets oh. the armor break. Or no, that's just gonna be all she wrote. Wow. Now, one thing to note about Kotal Khan that not a lot of people realize, look for when he has totems up and he does the disc on block. It's actually insane how much chip it does. I think it's upwards of 7 to 8% chip. Now, Rewind hasn't been able to fully catch on when to throw out these advancing moves in this matchup in particular. In this game, there's been so many whiffs and so many punishes from Scorpion Prox. Again, though, the instant jump into dash not working. Ooh. Counter hit. That's the game. That was a down three that got no. absolutely bullied. Oh, no, no, no. Almost. That was the right instant. We're seeing a little bit of a shakiness here, and the whip brings us into, wow, the most exciting game five to have in a tournament. The one that's either going to decide a tournament winner or a reset bracket into a fresh situation. I think you're looking at this crowd, you know what the people want. Fox, Fox was at their feet. Let that, let that say everything. Oh! That's how you start right there for rewind. Shot put away 330 HP out of your opponent. A scorpion turns it around though. Doesn't get as much damage, granted. But better than having a huge deficit as we begin what could be our final match of this tournament. Lovely confirm Woo! and the armor break. And this time we cash out. We spend it. They've been trading these blows to get us started. Good call out of the slight negativity there. Kotal Khan's forward one, two, a really good string. Minus four. Good flawless block setup uh, opportunity. Good parry setup opportunity. We haven't seen it from Rewind a lot. Wow! wow. This is, hey, I like this because I think he has some hit advantage here where he can put up one totem and then maybe get something that could be close to killing. And just being able to take a nice and reliable anti-air at the same time and actually still have not given Scorpion Prox fatal blow, so... This does become a little bit more interesting for him. Leaves it on his own. Scorpion Prox only needs one more lovely jump in and that will be it for sure. Tournament point and dare I say championship point for Scorpion Prox. It's off the read that's been so good against Rewind's Cordal. Both twins implementing that jump back late in the rounds. Catching Rewind whiffing. But it's going to be Rewind. Sending into the corner says, taste the blade of Ashtag. He's trying to stay alive. Delicious flawless block there from Scorpion Prox. Something that has been so famous of the twins. Those flawless blocks are unbelievable. Forward 2-2. Two, two. No one home though. A forward 2 again. The punish? That punish? Are you kidding me? Scorpion Prox riding some momentum right now. Not allowing him to swing out of the corner either. That was such a good check with the down four. It's good to bully Kotal Khan up close. Hang on a minute. The, mid. the fatal blow was spent earlier on, so we're not going to quite see it. Totems are going to be risky business now. You do not want to get jumped in on, because this could be your tournament life. Over. Down one plus frames. That's damage, but not enough. What Watch next? out for the fatal blow, Aquaman. That's going to be the round. It was grab or strike. And Rewind finds a point to reset this tournament. This is the critical moment. Are we going to see a reset? Or is the tournament going to finish up now? Chance are going. It was going to wild down with a flawless block. He didn't even flip this guy. know what happened. Are you kidding me? Props trying to take the breath from Rewind right now. The momentum in his favor. Got to the corner of the flawless block. Even uh -oh. when he gave him the one turn to press. Just in the back. No. Rewind. He's out of the corner. This is a scary moment now. Scorpion Prox, that's the first significant hit he's taken all round long and Rewind is very, very tender. Right, Totem 1, damage buff. Damage buff, Totem 2, damage buff. Oh, he's fully loaded right now. And he got him to freeze right there. But there's a threat of command grab, that's why at the last second you saw him go airborne, just in case he was at range of dash grab. A rewind knows he can't overextend, so he did the right thing. Especially with this stage, the sheer amount of mobility. The whip, hang on, I think that might be it! Not enough, one more. The raw grab, rewind. Ooh, ooh. It's going to knock down, gets one totem up. 17 health. Parries to absorb any chip. Look at that, the walk down. Trying to hunt him down in the bus off, finds it smart. Scorpion Prox from Chile, Mortal Kombat 11, Evolution Champion. I feel like that's one of the most underwhelming fights.
final plays that we could have seen. <laughs> but you know what? The situation called for it. We only need to hit you once. World champion. A 17-year-old world champion. Welcome to Mortal Kombat. What a unbelievable result all weekend long. Rewind so close to a bracket reset. Oh. Keeping the American dream alive. But I gotta say. He gave it his all. Did rewind. Had a much better performance uh, than even that combo breaker. Was able to was able to take out Nico Loss. Was able to show in three games, I think, in a row now, Combo Breaker included, that he can take Scorpion procs to the distance. This is just the upper echelon of MK competitive right now. This tournament, this top eight, this whole experience has been, for Mortal Kombat 11, absolutely magical as far as I'm concerned. It's been an unbelievable show. The players gave it their absolute 1,000%. I know there's so many of you in South America that are going to be rooting for them and pr I'm proud of the twins because they are the inspiration. You know, from one they twin are. to another, congratulations, well done. They're the inspiration for what, I mean, we almost all should be striving to achieve in this game, which is they, it looks like they put in so much effort offline with each other that it shows in the play here. Like, there's nothing that's catching them off guard. There's nothing they're not ready for or can even do. Well, what are we gonna do about it, Ketchup? That's a good question. But it, what it has shown us is that the story of Mortal Kombat can still evolve and progress. We've had so many players that rocked up from, you know, the kind of beginnings and then the later stage of Mortal Kombat X, players that got involved kind of in Injustice 2 and then early day MK11, a lot of those players carried over and yeah. were the absolute top dogs for good reason. But now in our current situation, we've had loads of players that were just grinding online during the pandemic, they started taking part. Shout out to the countless, countless community tournaments yes. that do Mortal Kombat activity. You know, your own the Coliseum that you yourself run with uh, the hardworking staff, you know, Rip Serena and countless, countless, countless other experiences. So many players there, that there, debuted there were here there, and they did well. There are tournaments happening almost every single day for Mortal Kombat 11, almost every single region in the world. So if you guys are sitting there asking yourself, should I play MK11, should I compete? Absolutely, now's a wonderful time. Even though we're in year three, year four, the community's as strong as ever because we're the ones keeping this game alive, baby. Oh, I'm looking at the players where we're setting up for the players to get their medals and their prizes and everything else. And I'm just looking at the variety of player that we've had here and it, it's really special. We had Foxy Grandpa and Sonic Fox, you know, that rivalry continue. Yes. We had the new story of these, of these uh, of unbelievable the twins. twins that are Just setting a very scary standard for what Mortal Kombat players will grow up to be. Yes, that, that general, you know, global Mortal Kombat showcase of the internationals being able to compete because that's always been the story is, is, is it just gonna be an American dominated tournament? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, 50-50 in top eight, doesn't get closer than that. It, for me, is growth of the scene. It's been a long time coming and year after year, the entire world just becomes better and we start to see the new generation of players. That's what it's all about. You know, but famous figures like Arn Kratos, Waz, you know, they've been turning up here. We had Video Games Yo who did very well for himself. And uh, that's just a small portion of non-NA players that have been able to turn up and continue to get better and better and better. Of course, we have Foxy Grandpa who just continues to be really the greatest another on player in all of you know the UK and it's going to be very hard to top that but then the North American players that just continue to show us that they're the best you know but now yes now 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 South America is starting to be able to travel a lot more and we're starting to see some different That's results right. that excites me and I can't say I'm more proud I am of them either to come out here at 17 years old and win the Mortal Kombat Champions here at Evolution 2022, guys. Can't believe it. I think that it's time that we send it to the stage to get this award ceremony started so you guys can retake a look at who made top eight. Let's give a huge round of applause to the players and let's send it to the stage. All right, EVO 2022, give it up one more time for Ultimate MK11 Top 8. Hey, I like that.
All right, so now let's go through our top eight contestants in seventh place coming from U.S. King Gambler. Give it up, give it up, give it up. All right, also in seventh place, straight from Brazil, Killer Shinnok! Yeah, give it up, give it up, everybody, let's go! All right, also in fifth place, we got from U.S., Han Rashi! All right, fifth place, they need no introduction. Sonic Vox! Give it up, give it up, give it up! All right, now down to fourth place, the legendary oh, Foxy Grimhart! Give it up, give it up. All right, now our top three. Nicolas from Chile. Hey. Oh, give it up, give it up, give it up, yeah. Look at, yes, show that off, show that off. All right, now in second place from U.S., give it up for Rewind, everybody. Give it up. We got a stick for Rewind, too. He gets one, too. He gets one, too. And now we are crowning our EVO 2022 MK11 Ultimate Champion from Chile, Scorpion Pro! He gets a stick too, hold on no. Hold on, he gets a stick, but Yo, yeah, show it off, baby, show it off. Give it up, but hold on. He gets the first place EVO 2022 MK11 Crystal, baby. Give it up, give it up. Drop. There we go, hold it high, my man, hold it high. You deserve it. Give it up one more time, let's go for our top eight. MK11, everybody.